me voy a quitar, eh, pues no quiero que me caiga la tierra. Hello, fight fans. This is your friend Gerardo Rodriguez coming over from Big Punch Arena here in Tijuana, Mexico with another night of six professional boxing bouts. So we're running a little bit late. Local commission has not arrived yet. You know, uh, it is Mexico. It is Friday night. Traffic is really, really bad. But hold on. We still got some high quality entertainment for you guys. So what we're going to do, we're going to have our truck, our production truck, rerun two professional beautiful fights from last year from Toscano Boxing. Take it away, guys.
as we get ready for our main event of the evening. We see here Jorge Pajarito Villa Lobos from Guadalajara, Jalisco, making his way to the ring. And a little backstage view for all of, for all of our viewers there. As we take a look at the cleaning crew, guys, keeping everything here COVID safe. Each and every fight wiped down, taking the right precautions, safety measures. Pajarito Villalobo. Okay guys, I have to give it to you. I'm feeling nostalgic. This is, a, this is the main event. As I am excited, I am nostalgic. Good point, man. I mean, it's been a long night, um, but it's gone by fast. You know, they, they, they've been good life each and every time, man. Uh, as we get the second half of our main event coming to the ring. And here we go, Angel Diablito. Ramos, trust me guys, we're in for a treat. This is a future champion right here. Mark my words, Angel Diablito Ramos, future world champion. I had a cha I had a the pleasure of speaking to him. Uh, we we had a nice long talk, a nice long talk. He spoke about his current training camp, his first full time training camp. So we're in for a hundred percent. A Diablito Ramos who is at his a hundred percent to give it all and live it all in the ring tonight. As we await the official announcement from our ring announcer, Pablo Flores. Guys, you're completely correct. Great night Ladies of Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to rock and roll with our main event of the evening. Eight rounds of boxing in the flyweight division. Namas y caballeros, este es el combate estelar de esta noche. Ocho rounds en la división de peso mosca. Your three judges scoring this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces. Carlos de la Rocha, Jesse Hernandez, y Sergio Lechuga. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action. Su referee para este combate, Juan José Ramírez. Ahora bien, amigos que nos siguen a través de la señal de las redes sociales. Fight Hub TV, VIP The Best in Boxing y GSS Global Sports Streaming. Estamos en vivo desde el Foro Hayalai, desde la frontera más visitada del mundo. Tijuana, Baja California, México. Ajusten sus cinturones. Introducing the fighter standing in the blue corner, wearing red and blue, white. He officially weighs in 112 pounds. Presentando ustedes en esquina azul, con pantaloncillo en color rojo con blanco, con un peso de 112 libras. In 10 professional bouts, he stands with a perfect professional record of 10 victories, no defeats, and six of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de 10 victorias, 0 derrotas, y 6 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. El invicto de Guadalajara, Jalisco, Jorge Pajarito Pechalobos. And his opponent across the ring standing in the red corner. He wears red and black. He officially weighs in the same 112 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja con un 
vistiendo un pantaloncillo de color rojo con negro, con el peso idéntico de 112 libras. In 25 professional bouts, he stands with a near perfect record of 24 victories, one lone defeat, and 17 of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record casi perfecto. 24 victorias, una derrota, y 17 de esas victorias por la vía rápida del cloroformo. El orgullo de la bella Cenicienta del Pacífico, Ensenada, Baja California. Damas y caballeros, aquí está Ángel Diablito Ramos. Fun fact. The final instructions para dar las indicaciones Angels, finales. Diablito Ramos, Juan only lost, has been to the current world champion of this division. Vamos a ganar una pelea limpia bonita, no hay que meter porque pueden perder la pelea, puedo bajar puntos y tener la pelea. No quiero faules, quiero una pelea limpia, suelto los dos, yo lo bendiga. And, and that's, you know, that's very well respected, you know, you have the consensus flyweight champion, Kasi Tanaka from Japan, 15 and 0, 9 knockouts. You have the number 2 WBC Julio Cesar Martinez, who's probably within reach, coming out of Mexico. So R Ramos not not far away from from maybe maybe contending for a world title shot, considering he does have a good record. He has a good style, and according to you, Gerardo, he had the first full training camp of his entire career, and that's saying a lot considering he's 24 and 1. Definitely. So we're in treat we're in a treat for tonight. I am pretty sure that Angel is going to be a top contender in the upcoming months, but tonight he has his opponent and he has to fully focus on Jorge Pajarito Villalobos. And, and Paja, what, what I did see about Pajarito, he likes to box. He likes to to come on come out on his back foot. Not typical from, from your from your Mexican fighter. He likes to box. As he as he continues to move laterally, throwing his jabs, trying to keep Ramos off of him. And that's good, Chris. That, that's what I would expect him to do with the, the 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 body that he has. He's tall, he's long, you know. And then, Ooh, nice. you have Diablito coming forward with that pressure and the power of punches and throwing to the body as he should like he just said he, he's he's facing a, a longer puncher taller taller fighter in Villalobos and we're having really good action right now but this is still a fill out round a, a little high pace fill out high round. pace fill out Ooh, and a good uppercut landed by Villalobos. Might have been a little headbutt in there as well. He touched gloves acknowledging the headbutt. And it's very rare that we see two southpaws fight each other. But but we have it here. Two southpaws fighting each other. Boxer versus puncher as well. You know what? I would I would categorize Diablito Ramos more as a as a boxer puncher. Good combination. Villalobos more of a boxer. But good style by Diablito Ramos. I, I like the style that he presents. You know, um, like I said, we've seen him fight before. Um, his draw with title contender Dwayne Beeman. That was an excellent fight, you know. I think it was just with the draw. Corcas is doing doing a good job at using the ring. He's keeping Diablito in the middle and moving around. He's a young fighter too. Yeah, good young fighter fighting off his back foot. But to tell you the truth, Dylan, right now, and to everyone at home, I think that Diablito Ramos is the stronger of the two fighters. As he as he was pretty much pushing back Villalobos the entire round. Stronger and he's shown his experience. Um, Jorge Villalobos has 10 fights versus the 25 that Angel Diablito Ramos has. So that experience is definitely going to play a role here. It's going to be interesting to see how Jorge is going to adjust to the type of pressure that 
Diablitos is, is putting on him. And, and it's smart pressure. He's like, he's moving his head as we see here. A quick clip. Back and forth action as we can see on that on that replay. Yeah, back and forth, but but my point was the fact that that Diablito Ramos moves his head right in the center, evading shots as he continues to move forward. It's a good little boxer puncher style that he has. I'll tell you one thing, if I was uh, in Diablito's corner, I would I would tell him throw more body punches. Make him move less. Throw more body punches. Make wow. him, uh, make him slow the pace. Then go to the head and head hunt. I believe you're right because I think he had the most success when he went to the body, and, and you saw a couple body shots there as he gets out of the way and counters. I, I like it, man. This is a good style that that uh, that Ramos has. Nice, a good little one-two there. I like how Jorge is using the ring, moving around, sticking and moving, but I think he's going to have to sit down on those punches a little bit more and make Diablito respect the power that he has because right now, Diablito is just walking he's forward. He's walking he hasn't down, felt yeah. any, any sting, any pain, so he's not worried. That's a great point. That's a great point, Dylan. As we see... Diablito putting on the pressure, putting even more pressure, working the body, then going to the head. And now a little bit more activity from Villalobos. We start to see some swelling on the right eye of, of Pacarito Villalobos. And I think he's complaining about a headbutt and remember guys we had a headbutt about a minute ago where they both acknowledge and that, that, cut. that might be where that that little knot on Villa Lobos happened. They seem to be checking Diablito. I did not notice any cuts but yeah, there, he's there cut. it is. There it oh is. yeah he's definitely cut and look at Villa Lobos who's also cut he's right also around cut. the same area. He's both swelled and cut. Swelled and, and cut. And I think it was a result of, of that body clash, was it not? Yeah, look, uh, I, I would think it was from the head, but... <laughs> doesn't look good for Villalobos. Eh? It doesn't look... It is in a, bot, in, it's in in a, a bad spot. It's in a very bad spot. Definitely. It's rolling right into the eyes. Uh, uh, Angel I... Ramos seems like it's a little bit off the eye. Right. right. But Villalobos, no bueno. I would hate to see this fight being stopped because of the damn cut. Good uppercut. Uh, as a consequence of a head clash. I would hate that. Yeah, it'd be very upsetting if it happens. It seems though with the quick wipe down that they did on Villa Lobos, that the blood is gone. Now, both fighters have cuts. When your opponent has a cut, you start to focus on it. They <laughs> both have it. Yeah. They both feel the urgency. Definitely. It seems like it seems like Ramos though feels a little bit more urgency going forward, throwing a little bit more shots and good uppercut by Villalobos there, right in between Angel's gloves. Got his attention, may not have hurt him, but got his attention. And good. Good body shots landed there by Ramos. He had a fight uh, before, uh, after Duane's fight. Uh, I don't think he's fully, I don't think he is. Uh, the, maybe the, a little bit of ring rust, is that where you're maybe, going at? Yeah, maybe, but there's a lot of fighting. Uh, there's still a lot of fighting to go. So. There's a lot of fight left. Um, but to go back to the ring rust, uh, maybe it just, because right there in the last 20 seconds or so, Ramos seemed to kind of pick up the pace. And it's only two rounds, man. It's only two rounds. It's an eight round fight. You gotta pace yourself. Um, he's most likely just kind of easing into the fight. And as a seasoned professional fighter with 26 professional bouts, you know, He's easing into the fight. 
Uh, so it may be ring rust or just the fact that he's taking his time. We have the head, pla the head clash. We have the, the instant replay right here. You can see that. Oh, that looks, oh, that looks, that looks bad. That looks as a head clash. As we, as we take another quick look, and, and, and right there, and, and both fighters acknowledge that they right got there. hit. Instantly. And he, <laughs> one blames it on the other. <laughs> And as we start, as we start the round, a very special shout out and a big thank you to all our fans in Stockton and the surrounding cities in the California Central Valley. We appreciate all your love and support. We will be back soon. Toscano Boxing Promotions, bestinboxing.com. It's called Best in Boxing for a reason. And good little body shots landed there by Ramos. Jorge not moving as much as he did on the, pre on the pre uh, previous rounds, is he? It, it doesn't seem that way, Gerardo. Uh, I, I believe, though, the main reason why is those body shots landed by Ramos. Oh, my Ramos, God. Is, Ramos is throwing good shots to the body. Jorge was that with that combination uh, didn't seem to sit down on the punches a bit more, which is what he needs to do because the punches he was throwing before just Ooh, Ooh and a good shot landed there by Ramos, and you're absolutely right there, Dylan, because Ramos just walks through those shots. He, he walks through those shots because Villalobos not sitting down on his shots and therefore can't keep Ramos off of him. Now, if Jorge Villalobos had the plan of touch and moving, touch and moving. Right now he's fallen into Diablito's game plan, which is sitting down and exchanging, where we know Diablito, you know, has the upper hand. He's throwing those harder punches, Chris. Yeah, and, and as we see, Jorge Pajarito Villalobos likes to counter. He's doing it, but, but not as effective, Ooh. and that was a good right hook by Ramos. As they're asking for the double jab, and he does it via Lobos. Nice work in the inside by Angel. And Ramos is throwing solid body shots. And a hard hook to finish on the top of the head of Villa Lobos. Villa Lobos fights back hard. Have and this fight, yeah, and this, fight is fight started, this fight is starting <laughs> to heat up, guys. Villas, Villalobos has tried to step back and throw that, that uh, left uppercut twice. Twice, so it, it looks like he's, he's waiting to counter him. Yeah, he noticed something, right? Yeah, yeah, it looks like it. And, now, oh, oh, and a solid oh. shot by Ramos, trying to close out the run from and he does, landing two overhand lefts to the head of Villalobos. What a great way to finish that round, guys. Tell you what, those, those last 10 seconds, wow. Great it, exchange. It, it definitely stole the round for Ramos, in my definitely. opinion. Yeah, you're right on point on that one, Chris. It's round four. This fight is going by quickly, you guys. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm getting sucked into the fight, and the rounds are just going by. I could have yeah. sworn we were round two. I, I like the unorthodox pressure style um, of Angel Ramos. He's he's honestly like a similar Southpaw style or Southpaw version of Manteca Medina, who we saw earlier today. This round, and Pajarito taking the middle of the ring. He should work out his jab more and more. There he goes, double jab. Trying to keep uh, Angel from 
hooking him to the body. And now we see Villalobos stepping forward for the first time in the in the fight, which is not something that 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 is a custom of his. I wonder if that was something they told him in the corner. In the you're right. corner, put a little bit more pressure. Because you have to think, you know, um, I, I know Ensenada is not too far, 45 minutes away maybe, um, 30 minutes if you drive like Dylan. Um, Jorge Pajarito Villalobos from Guadalajara, man. So, so that's, the, that's the visitor today, you know. That, know, that I, reminds me, Chris, Dylan, it is that time of the night. The Chalupa meter. The Chalupa the meter. The Chalupa meter is back, and I'm giving this fight 333 Chalupas. I'm still very confused on the Chalupa hey man, meter. How does the score We're, be yeah. done? Dude, chalupas, chalupas? It's whatever are, Gerardo it's wants. Whatever. It's, whatever it's he wants. Thing people say Chalupas. Chalupa is a good thing. If you I'm, have so, a chalupa, I'm switching back to Chris's team, man. I, I'm yeah, not, yeah. I, I've yet not seen in my whole life a man with a very Chalupa rare. in his hand be, feeling sad. Very rare, Dylan, that I want you on my team, but I want you on my team right now <laughs> in this case. As, as Ramos goes back to the body, a little bit of sense of urgency from Villalobos. Once again, charging forward. Not what he was doing in the first three rounds. And Good he's being jab. successful with it, Chris. He's being smart with the pressure. And we talked about at the top of the telecast about Angel Ramos' first time making a, a complete training camp. No interruptions, no side job, just focusing here. And, and now, promoter and now he has a promoter, yeah, yes. It's, it's, it's a fun fact. 24 fights, 24 wins, one defeat. How do you get that far in your career without having a promoter? Being that's that's how good Angel being Ramos talented. is. That, that, that was going to be my answer. You took it out, out of my mouth. <laughs> being talented. Um, he's a good fighter, man. You guys see it here. T take nothing from Jorge Pajarito Villalobos, who is doing his work. You know, he's an undefeated fighter, 10-0. The hardest thing to go is that, oh, we say it all the time, major cliche in boxing, but it's absolutely true. You know, and as the rounds progress, Diablito still putting on that pressure, but Villalobos is starting to look more intelligent in there, and he's starting to find a pace. Yeah, so, so going back to the fact that, yeah, the hardest thing to go is that, oh, so he's he's adjusting as we can see here in the replay. Good exchange there, we, changing levels, right? We didn't see too much of the adjustment that, that I had in mind, but uh, he blocked the shots coming from Ramos and he's staying in the pocket. So quick Spanish lesson here. Pajarito translates little bird. I am not seeing a little bird in Jorge Villalobos. They should change his name. Perhaps eagle. Something better than little bird. He's got the eagle powers. Damn right. Nacho Libre would say. <laughs> Nacho! Nice exchange. Both connected punches. And, and, and just now, I'm, I'm seeing a little bit of frustration in since the game change in the last round by Villalobos. I'm seeing a little bit of frustration in Ramos, um, unable to get to his opponent as he was in the first three rounds. I agree because you know what? Now Villalobos, he's landing some shots. Oh, Ooh. and a hard shot by Ramos. Kind of puts an end to what we were saying as he slips in the corner. There's a little bit of water in the corner there, and he's and he's getting moved back there again, and he escapes from the corner. In my opinion, that that is what Angel has to do: force the interchange, 
force the action, force the pace, keep the pressure on, keep it, it doesn't matter if you uh, eat a couple punches here and there, force the pace, try to exchange uh, punches, because most likely, Angel is gonna get the better of them. Yeah, good point, Gerardo, it's, it seems like that's the flow of the fight, and a good one too there by Ramos. Nice uppercut. Not much of a response yet from Villalobos. Yeah, like he, he looks so good in that, or not so good. It was just his best round in the fourth round. We thought he was making a comeback. Ramos is kind of taking that, that, that slack back. Stealing his thunder. A good combination good. by yeah, Villalobos. And, and a good one too by Villalobos. And you see him using that feint, making him, making Diablito jump in. Good hook there by Villalobos. Making it a little bit tighter here in the final minute. Good jab by Villalobos. Whoa, a little bit of entanglement there. They had that Jada, no Jada pun, Pickett. No pun with Will Smith and, and Jada Smith. Absolutely no pun. I can't feel like Angel's pace is most it's slowing down a little bit. I wonder if it. I wonder if he's uh, expecting something bigger or exchanging, uh, trying to exchange punches as we uh, end round number five. I see him chipping away at Villalobos, just using his experience, you know, just touching him, touching him, touching him. And the, the truth is, it gets to you. Little by little, that, that pressure will continue. And the style it gets that Villalobos has, too, is, is, is tiring. He's constantly in, out, in, out, using yeah. the ring, while Villalobos can sit down and stay in the middle and just sit on those power punches. So Good the pressure point. is is on uh, Villalobos. Good point. That's what it is. As we take a look at Angel's corner, how uh, his trainer is help helping him, putting on some grease, telling him instructions. What would be the best strategy, guys? What would be the best adjustment that Diablito could do? As we see the replay and we see the exchange of punches, as Pajarito is trapped into the ropes. What, what, what strategy, what adjustments should, should Diablito uh, do right now, Chris? I, I believe he, he should just simply turn it up a gear. He, he's doing exactly what, what is asked of him, you know, by his corner. That's what he needs to continue to do. But just step it up a little bit. G give him a gear up. Give him a gear up. Put it, put it into fifth gear. Diablito right now, he's doing a good job at putting on the pressure, but he is chasing Villalobos, and what I would like to see him use is um, cutting the ring, you know, put him in those corners. He's throwing power punches, man. If he puts him in a corner, doesn't let him, doesn't let him out, he's going to hurt him. He could end the fight there. That makes yeah. a lot of sense, still, and that's hopefully the, the corner there uh, will hear you. <laughs> Yeah, because you see him walking around instead of cutting off the ring. And Villalobos is doing a good job at evading. Yeah, right now Villalobos is doing a, a good job of boxing. He's, he's doing well. In the first minute of this round, we'll see how long he can do it for. And now Diablito has been throwing those power punches. So that's going to get him tired. You know, and um, we were talking about the Ooh. layoff. And he catches him there with the right hook. Oh, another body shot. We can hear those guys. Considering there's no audience, we hear the thuds. And those last two shots by, by Ramos were pretty hard to the body. You see how smart Villalobos is playing it right now? Because he's jumping in, jumping out. Jab, jab, point, points. I like it, man. Yeah, I mean, he, he's doing the right thing, you know. Um, winning, winning the round, maybe. It, yeah, man, it's a, it's a difficult fight to score now. Yeah, that one's going to be on the judges. That was a good um, two-punch two. combination by, by Diablitos. 
But so far, the action. Just Villalobos. Here you go. Hit, well, hit, well here's the thing. He, he's just moving a lot. I don't see a lot of shots landed by Villalobos. The harder and telling shots have been landed by, by Ramos in this round. But not as often. And that's... That's where the judge's um, own bias comes in. You guys are having a great discussion. So who you rather be, right? Uh, the guy who's uh, moving, uh, having a great performance. They're talking about sidestepping and uh, ring generalship, or the one who's throwing punches and being aggressive. So this is a good discussion to have. Definitely, I wouldn't want to be a judge on this one. All I have to say is we still have rounds to go. It's still a young fight, and you know what? One shot can make this whole thing end. Yeah, just like it did in the in the, in the last fight. Definitely. Um, but but here's the thing. This is this is the point I want to make for everybody at home. Villalobos walking back, in in a sense running back. Um, who would you rather be, the guy going uphill in Villalobos or the guy going downhill in Ramos? It's much easier to go downhill going forward in a boxing fight than it is to go backwards like Villalobos is. And he's not landing a lot of telling blows is Villalobos. He's not landing those hard punches like Diablito, but he is still landing and he's still getting points on those on those scorecards. Now, um, I want everybody at home to think about um, Anthony Joshua versus Anthony Reese. When he came back in that rematch, he boxed him in tell yeah, he was sticking and moving. Yes, that's what he did. He he did a, he did a fantastic job. Did a Joshua over Reese. I don't think I don't I don't think it, I don't think I see the same thing here though in Villalobos. I think Villalobos Villalobos is getting tagged by Ramos throughout throughout the whole fight. And on that note, everyone, this is uh why when you get into boxing they say do not leave it up to the judges because you never know. Everybody every uh judge has their own bias as how boxing should be and you get three different angles you get three different angles from the ring uh, three different judges hard to score guys hard to score I have to say something it's like way different it's a whole other planet watching the fight uh, Right here from where we are standing, which is just a couple of yards away from the ring, from the judge's corner, or even you guys with all the instant replays and the several angles we have with this streaming. So it, it, it really is a matter of appreciation and hopefully you guys are having uh, this treat as we are doing so tonight. And as you were talking, Gerardo, Diablito seems to, to be coming on in this round landing a little bit harder shots now as opposed to last round where, where he really didn't find them. Even though I still gave him the round, last round to Diablito Ramos, he didn't do much last round, but he's doing a little bit more this round. Making Villalobos work harder off that back foot. And he is working hard because Diablito puts him close to the corner, but he manages to escape every time. And that's where Diablito needs to step to the other side and faints and faint and not let him know which way he's going to come in. But right now, I think that the one who is inflicting more damage is definitely Diablito Ramos. Won't you say that, guys? For this round, yes, I, I would agree with you. Like I mentioned before, that style that Villalobos has is tiring. You're constantly jumping in and out, in and out. Hit, move, hit, move. It's beautiful to watch. This is uh, what what boxing is, you know, yeah, hit man. and don't get hit. Back and forth, you know, like I'm trying to catch you, Tom and Jerry type stuff. Another head, head clash time. again. Another yeah. head boy. Ooh. That cut, Jesus. Ooh, that cut. Oh, this man. one is bad. It's oh, right man. on the eye. That one looks... Uh, you know what, guys? Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, goodness. I think... I don't want to jinx it, but... Nah. This, I, I that, won't do it. Uh, that should be it. Yeah. That's a very bad one right above the eyelid. Heading right into the eye. That is a tough one. 
And, and what a shame if this is this is the the case, oh, which it seems like it's going to be, because that's a very oh, bad cut, that's guys. That's a very that's a bad, very bad cut on the very bad spot. That's not going to stop. Oh, and it's moments like this where you have to think about the future of Villalobos. He's a young fighter, man. He was doing a really good job. He, I, he, I was, would, uh, doing, he, was, he was making a valiant effort in, in, in a closely contested fight, which I think, the truth, he was losing. And if it, it's going to go to the scorecards... He, he will most likely lose this decision. That is a sick cut. But they're stopping the blood, and and they're going to continue. Whoa. Is oh, that it? Look like it? No. It looks no. like no. it's done. So, so we can't really hear under the mask of the referee. He did not wave his arms. Um, this will be a technical decision. So we await the judges scorecards and I believe we're gonna score that round because the bell rang, so you have to score that round. Correct? Correct, Chris. I'm I'm staring at the cut. That's it's a pretty gnarly cut. That, yeah, that's a pretty pretty tough cut right there. But you hit the nail on the head, Dylan, with what you say. Uh Regarding, you have to think about uh, Jorge Pajarito Villalobos. He is a promise. He showcased a lot of talent, a lot of high-level boxing. So yeah, you should really take into consideration that hey, he's a young fighter. Take care of him and and and, and leave to fight another day, right? He said hey. no. He's 20 years old. You know, he has a lot more boxing to do. It's a shame that our main event ends like this. It was starting to heat up. Good fight, man. Good fight. As we await the decision, Chris. Huge thank you to Toscano Boxing for these fights. And thank you, everybody at home, for tuning in. To everybody watching us around the globe, we can actually say that, Dylan. Everybody watching us around the globe. Uh, we had viewers from Nigeria. We had viewers from Australia. We had viewers from Stockton, California, who are disappointed with no Stockton slaps in tonight's broadcast. Zero Stockton slaps. That's right. So thank you to all of our fans everywhere. You know, we appreciate all your love and support. In return, our goal is to provide top quality competitive fights here, man. There's there's no cherry picking here. And that's, um, it, sometimes unfortunately, it ends up with decisions like this where the fights have to be stopped. The fighters are going to injure each other. But hey, it's competitive. competitive this is fight. top quality boxing. I, I like what you said. Uh, no cherry picking uh, for any of the fighters under the banner of Toscano Boxing Promotions. Guys, this was a good card. These were good matchups. Uh, we hope the viewers at home appreciate the, the competition level presented by Toscano Boxing Promotions and bestinboxing.com. Guys, more to come from these two entities. I, I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited for the future. As we get ready for the official Hello, hello again, Fight Fans. This is your host, Gerardo Rodriguez, coming over from Big Punch Arena here in Tijuana, Mexico, with another big night of boxing. We've got six fights schedule for you guys tonight commission local commissions has not arrived they're beginning to arrive though but you know what it is friday night traffic is really really bad so what we are going to do we're going over with our truck or our production truck who's going to rerun a very cool fight of our boris Teca's own kevin torres in march uh, earlier this year it's a very action-packed fight so take it away boys Voy a hablar de mi pasado, voy a hablar de mi pasado. 
darles de mi vida no todo es lo que parece yo también he batallado yo vengo de gente humilde y hay muchos momentos tristes imposible de from Bellingham, Washington, USA the Diamond Boy Kevin Torres <laughs> Torres making his way to the ring here, 17, one and one, only one defeat. Only two defeats shared by these fighters. Each have one defeat, but Torres has twice the experience as Guijardo. So we'll see Namas if that plays out. Boristeca Boxing Promotions y King Geo Promotions. VIP. The best in boxing. Presentan nuestro evento coestelar de esta tarde. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your co-feature bout. Set for eight rounds of boxing, the super lightweight division. Ocho rounds de combate en la división de peso, super ligero. Interesting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears white trunks with silver trim. He officially weighs in 140 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul. Vistiendo pantaloncillo blanco con plata, con un peso de 140 libras. And nine professional bouts. He stands with a record, a near perfect one. Eight victories and one lone defeat. And four of those victories coming by the fast way of a knockout. Presenta un record casi perfecto. Ocho victorias, una derrota, y cuatro de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Representando a su natal, la bella cenicienta del Pacífico, Ensenada, Baja California. Saúl Cubanito Guardado. And his opponent across the ring standing in the red corner. He wears purple trunks with gold and white. He officially weighs in the same 140 pounds. Y su rival en esquina roja, vistiendo pantaloncillo color morado con oro y blanco, con un peso idéntico de 140 libras. In 19 professional bouts, he stands with a record of 17 victories, one defeat. One draw and 14 of those big wins coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de 17 victorias, una derrota, un empate y 14 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Originally from Bellingham, Washington. He has blood from Mazatlán, Sinaloa and representing House of Boxing, San Diego, California, USA. The Diamond Boy. Kevin Torres! And now with the final instructions, dando las indicaciones finales, su referee en turno, Jesús Soto. Eight rounds, ocho asaltos. Señores, yo quiero una pelea limpia, ok? No quiero golpes bajos, tengo que con los golpes de la cabeza y los de la nuca. Golpes en la espalda no valen, señor, no quiero golpes de revés, ok? Cuando yo les hable, se separan los dos y dejan de tirar golpes. Voy a molestar al que no haga caso. Choquen guantes. Here we go, guys. Victor Torres taking, I mean, Kevin, Kevin Torres, Torres taking on Saul Guardado in this co-main event. Super lightweight title. I mean, super lightweight fight. Should be a good one. We got eight rounds. Yeah, it should be a good one. Each fighter only has one defeat on their professional record. Twice the experience, though, for Torres. Both of these guys up and coming. Stars here in this boxing arena. And uh, Ooh, we're going to see who's Nice got shot by Torres the there. Going, oh, but right back comes yeah. Guardado. And what I say. Ooh, nice Guardado. hooks by Guardado, too. Looks like he's got a stunt. Yeah. Torres, and he's really on the boat. And he sits him down early. And, and kind of the strategy that was... Described by you earlier. Yeah, yes. that he needs to come out strong with guns blazing. And we'll see how Kevin Torres is able to overcome this as he has come back from knockdowns before. 
But we know now that Guardado is going to come forward and try to finish this fight now. Torres has to survive. He's yeah. clinching. He's Kevin doing the right thing. He has to keep things. his hands up. Keep his, he has to keep his hands up and clinch. Yeah, he, he, he can't he, see he, that right there. He's not going to cut it. He needs to move. Oh, nice right hand from Torres, maybe. But man, oh. Guardado is coming. Cubanito is putting it on right yeah, now. Yeah, he yeah, is coming clinch. strong. And, and, and he is on the gas and he is not letting up. And oh, Kevin Torres oh. is, you see is doing of... his best to move and to, to evade shots and come back and keep his opponent off of him. Torres in survival mode right now, but you see Guardado slowly starting to drop a little bit of the pace, but still coming forward with big hooks, big and, shots. Ooh, and that's the, hand lands. that's the strategy that uh, Torres needs to do. He needs yeah. to go to that body like he's Just doing like there. Just like he did right there, yeah, but take, man. Take some starch out. Guardado has got plenty of starch coming right yeah. now. He's back, Torres up again and hit him with a nice left hook. The Diamond Boy is trying to survive this first round where he got knocked down and in the this first is, minute. This onslaught is still going. Nice this has been a non-stop round, less than a minute less than this first round. This one is scheduled for eight guys, so if a Diamond Boy can weather the storm, he can drag it into those later waters. But... What's going on is when Kevin's throwing, throwing um, well, well, his opponent is, is catching him between punches. Oh, I, I, I believe he got Torres again. Torres yeah. responds, though, very good. Torres landing back his own shots, but it doesn't seem to be deterring the forward onslaught of Cubanito. And Guardado is living up to his to yeah. his moniker, man. Like everything he everything he said he was gonna do, he's doing it. Yes, he is coming forward. Nice body shot. But Torres is putting that work into the body, trying to slow it down. That is the end of the first round where we saw the Diamond Boy, Kevin Torres, get knocked down in the first minute of that first round. He was able to get back up and he's able to weather the storm. Yeah. But King Gio, man, that, that's that's not, that's not the way you want to start off the first round. No, um, he got caught cold. Um, I mean, he needs to be very careful in between punches. Uh, his opponent is catching him in between punches. So, example, Torres is throwing. Uh, here's the countdown coming down. Oh yeah, let's take a look at yeah. some of the, the, the. Yeah, let's let's see how that that, that knockdown happened. Looks he like got, he's okay here so far, but on the ropes, he, he, he caught one that really yeah, right there. It was, that that was left hook. Punches, it was yeah. a left hook. And, and, and was, these piled up punches yeah. just kind of assisted him on yeah. going down. Yeah. But uh, may, maybe it's just the fact that, you know, he didn't warm up too much in, in the back, got caught cold. Yeah. Yep. Um, it, it happened. You know. But he survived it, and let's yeah. see how he can uh, uh, overcome, if he can overcome that early knockdown. Obviously, he uh, shooking up the cobwebs here. He looks like he's ready to go. He knows he's in a fight now, does Torres. Guardado has been acting like he's been in a fight since that opening bell. Maybe that's why yeah. he's able to jump on Torres, but I have a feeling that now that Torres is uh, woken up a little bit, we're gonna see a little bit different fight in the second round. More of the same action, though. Torres starting to use that jab, mix up the combinations here. Dude. And the way uh, Guardado is leaning, maybe the uppercuts is, would have suit Torres down a little better. Oh, nice, nice body, body shot, shot. Again, But Guardado, oh, Guardado, right there, Guardado strong, man. Guardado is strong and he just is, coming he's forward, man. Him. Look at that shot. He's putting everything into those shots right now. It's Guardado. Yeah, and these are good counters yeah. by Kevin Torres. Guardado yeah. is putting everything into those shots. Honestly. Guardado not, doesn't respect his power. That's what's going on. You know, I'll tell you what, Chris Martin, this is exactly what you said in the opening needed to happen for Guardado, and he's making it happen. But if Torres can drag this into some deep water later rounds, we'll see if all this energy output of Guardado yeah. is going to be to his detriment if he can't get the KO he's looking for. That, hey, we don't know what kind of shape he's in, man. Maybe he could keep yeah. this up for for all 10 rounds of this fight. Ho ho and hopefully he for us fight fans, he can keep <laughs> this up because this is a great fight to be watching ringside folks and he switches to southpaw something that i typically tell my fighters not to do and you know let's see how he can do that southpaw position 
the offense is easy. It's that defense on um, being a yes, southpaw that, that, that's what makes it uh, difficult. And look, look every the shots are going in now. The, yeah. Now the shots are going in by Torres. I don't know why Guardado's going to southpaw. Not, what he was doing was working. Yeah, yeah. exactly. It doesn't, it doesn't you make sense. You do that when what you're yeah. doing is not working. Exactly. Not when you're being exactly. Yeah. Why so now, you switch the style yep. when you're being effective? Now he's open for a straight right all day. Yeah. Straight right. So, it's so, a very so, interesting uh, 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 technical decision here being made yeah. by Guardado. Straight right. So I'll, I'll say it again for all the you young fighters watching. Check the defense. The offense yeah. is there. Yeah. You can do the offense. The defense is what. Look. Yeah, the angles hook. change. The right hand is yeah. different. T T Torres is now landing more shots yeah. since uh, what did turn southbound. Oh! And maybe he knew something we did it because he landed a good shot yeah. there. Well, no, no, it's, it proves us wrong there, but, you know, we'll see if it, it continues to be effective. He landed a great power left hook from that southpaw position and kind of pushed Torres back. Didn't really knock him down or rock him, but definitely uh, hit him with a shot that made him step back and yeah. think about it. And now, he, and now he goes back. Diamond Boy's yeah. back in the pocket. Nice uppercut from the Diamond Boy. Good body shots. It's going to come down to who's more conditioned, who's more ready, because they're throwing a lot of punches. Yeah, this is, this is this, a rugged this, fight. This, this might be a war of attrition yeah. in the end, guys. And uh, I think, you know, as we said, you know, Torres has a lot more experience. Maybe that plays into yeah. his benefit as the fight goes longer. But if uh, Guardado is in great shape, oh, Guardado and that turns was, around. That was very low. That was very low. Round's over. There is so much action, you can't even hear the bell. That's how yeah. you know it's a good yeah. fight. Yeah. The whole crowd is yelling, we are yelling. Mm -hmm. As we go into this third round, it's been nonstop action in this co-main event. And you see why uh, why Saul Rios, the the CEO of Boris Take a Boxing, and, and, and in promotion with the King Geo Promotions and in association with you guys as well. You guys put on a great car yeah. here. And... Uh, Matchmaking has been great here, and then the placement, too. This is definitely a fight yeah. that's deserved of a co-main event slot. Yeah. yeah. This definitely was, considering, like, look you know, at the Let's action take a look pack. at that back and forth. Yeah, yeah, as we were talking about just trading three for three, four for four. Yeah. Your, the opponent throws this. They come right back, answering back. Gotta love when two guys are just willing to toe the line and... Duke it out, no one's running, no one's hiding. Both fighters sitting there trying to land their shots. Both fighters look like they're crisp too. None of them are doing the uh, deep breaths or anything or shoulders dropping. They both look ready to go. Both have strong eyes. He came out southpaw again. Well, I mean, he must feel like he has a, some, he can he sees that left, yeah, that power might be, left opening somehow. I mean, like, all I see is possibly a left uppercut, like a... a no, well, well he left a that left straight towards the end of the round on Torres, but, I mean... Is it possible he, maybe, I don't know, hurt his right hand? I maybe, mean, you're right. Power there? Yeah, maybe you're right, yeah. Maybe, I mean, we'll have to yeah. talk to him after the fight and see, you know, if you, if you maybe hurt your hand and then you you know you can't throw power with it but you can paw the jab with it and still land yeah. big lefts like that yeah maybe that's that's what's going on we'll have to ask with Arlo after the fight but Ooh. we'll see how it's effective Good or not it's a nice there. straight straight left to the see body what, he landed see what, there. What, what kevin torres should be doing is doubling up that right hand he's missing the first one and then step in with the right with the second right hand and then come back with the left hook that's that's what you should be doing with a solid plus straight right hand or, or, or lead a lead hook there and that was a quick little short left uh, left down the pipe by Guardado there. Guardado looking really impressive coming in here with this. Yeah, man. Right like so, there. so I guess he, he he can switch hit. You know, not too many fighters can do it. You know, the the most prominent one is uh, Terence Crawford. Yeah. This is the second time I mentioned Terence Crawford in this telecast. Yeah, he's one of the best in the world. That's yeah, why. yeah. But but you know what, man? Hey, give him credit. Give Guardado credit. He's he's doing it. He's doing it good. You know, and I can almost guarantee you Torres did not spar any southpaws in his training camp. Yeah, that might be it too. I mean, I still I still don't like him southpaw because he was he was he, he was so more well. effective yeah, as, as an orthodox. Um, the, the fight has extremely uh, gone towards Kevin so, uh, Torres's favor because he's, he's he can hit him without having getting count. Yeah, and, and, and actually, uh, Torres' only sole loss on his professional record was against this outpaw. Yeah, that so might maybe be it. Maybe Guardado he saw, tape. saw yeah. that tape and yeah, said, that's true. hey, he had trouble with southpaws. Yeah. I'm a decent uh, fighter at southpaw. Yeah, maybe tall I'll south, switch. A tall southpaw. And, yeah. and, and uh, Guardado has maybe a slight height advantage. So. 
He's pulling the Rocky too here. He, he trained. Uh, mm, he, ah, he, that's true. He, he trained only southpaw for the whole camp, and so he could switch at any time. Yep. Oh. oh. You know, See, but you know what? He's landing he, those He hits. landed it, but Torres he didn't hurt him. Just, it yeah, doesn't Torres, have the power. Because right it doesn't have the pad. power yep. as the right hand. Torres shook it off. Yeah, he shook it off. He took it very well. And he's pressing, and he's pressing. Ooh. Um, yeah, Gio, you were kind of describing yeah. what you wanted to see Torres yeah. do against this double, he has to, he has to, He has to double up the right hand and come back with the hook, go to his left, because he's going to his right. He's, he's, getting, he's exposed into to the, the left, left hand. Right. He has to go the other way. He's going right into the right hand. He has to counter the left jab that, with the hook. Got to keep that foot on the yeah, outside, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Right now, look, you see, he's going yep, right to the. Yep. Right, he's going he's, to his right. This his corner has to tell him he has to go to the and, opposite side. It's, well, it's, and that's the thing too. If you've been training for a right-handed yeah. fighter and you feel comfortable going one yeah. way, maybe all camp he's been going one way, thinking he's got to stay away from the right hand. Absolutely. Now all of a sudden he's got to end the fight, try to switch. But that's the but that's, that's the telltale that's, of a true pro. That's, that's exactly what a professional athlete has to be able to do. That he has to adjust during the fight. He has to adjust. His, his, his camp has to tell him, listen, he, there, he's, if he's staying southpaw, he, you have to go to his opposite side, double up the right hand. Um, I, I mean, I personally don't try throwing a jab at a southpaw because you get countered. Um, it's just small things like that. You have to be gamed up. And your, his corner, I'm sure, is telling him. But it's one thing telling him and one thing doing it. Executing in there yeah, when you got the, a guy like Wigardo we we throwing yeah. those big shots yeah. at you. Yeah, let, let's take a look at, at, at some of the uh, shots landed. Look at that. There's that oh, nice yeah. step in left hand from Guidar, though. He took, it well. he took it very well. But, yeah, Kevin took it well. And, you know, maybe we saw Kevin get jumped earlier yeah. in the fight and just kind of get surprised. Yeah. And a shot that might not have hurt him later in the fight when he's warmed up, you know, kind of yeah. caught him off guard. And now that he's warmed up, he's, his chin is a little bit... Uh, a little bit stronger almost now that he's uh, kind of woke up and got back in here. Been a long time, so he's got the, some of the rust has been shaken off now, and he's yeah. But but I like the curveball that um, Guardado was throwing at him, yeah. man. Like yeah. all right, I come out strong, like I said I was. As a, as I, a I orthodox fighter, yeah. I execute and then I come out southpaw in the in the latter rounds. So. And let's see if he Ooh. switches. I see him switch. He stepped back into the orthodox can. position yeah. now. Maybe he's gonna go back and forth during the rounds. So when the fight gets What's hard, you go back to what, what you know. You go back to what you know, and that's why he's turning. Here you see. Look. see, Kevin, yeah, Kevin yeah. is closing the distance now. He needs to be careful on those counters, but he's closing the distance. Oh, nice. Kevin with the uppercut. Nice. Torres with the body shot. Torres with a nice hook. And it seems like Ordell lost some steam. On yeah, both he hands. lost a little bit of steam. Oh, and as, as we, we say, say that, that every, yeah. They, yeah. they must be able to hear us because every time me and Chris yeah. said someone's losing steam, they, yeah. they bite their mouthpiece and throw five hard ones. Oh, oh nice. Guidaro Beautiful. misses with the uppercut and the counter right comes from Torres and now and a yeah. double up. Hook, nice. uppercut, does it again. Hook, uppercut, nice left hook by Torres. Torres starting to come on now, big right hand by yeah, Torres. Torres is coming on strong yeah. this round, man. Yeah. Like, And this is a 10 round fight. Nah, oh, nice. This is a 10 round fight. 10 round? This guy's uh, scheduled for eight, actually, this uh, co-main event. I apologize, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, 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 oh. 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 I, 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 See, well, you know what, though? The referee just looked at him. He didn't tell him, tell him anything. That's why he went forward. You know, that's, yeah, that's you, got, you know, if I was yeah, Kevin, I would do the same thing. He's good. Absolutely. You don't stop until it's, the referee it's not my stops job you. To, nope, to exactly. decide if, if exactly. I low blow it or not. It's your job to tell me. Yeah, that's, yeah. If you, you, your job as a fighter is to go out there and perform, not to be the referee. Yeah, this uh, this referee is not having his best day in the office. We'll mm. put it to put it nicely, I guess you could say right now. Yeah. And 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 of the two. Guardado definitely needed this. Oh, absolutely, because you could, you, could, you could see the oh, momentum. Yeah. The momentum it was switching. a momentum switch going on, yeah. and uh, now he has some time to reset. But you know what? Torres looks like he's just as focused as he was before the break. So we'll see if he's able to continue this nice. outpouring of, of offense here. Oh, oh, oh he heard it. Oh, that's yeah. a good uppercut. Oh, you can hear these slamming. And like I mentioned in the uh, in my predictions and what needed to be done for the keys to victory, you know, take them into deep waters. And here you see the experience. Look at that. Oh, oh he caught. That nice is, left hand yeah, lands he, for he, he, he was just he, he was just standing correctly. A little, little yeah. bit off balance. A little balance, bit off balance. Yeah, yeah. But but look at the head movement. Look look at the the sharp shots that Torres continues to yeah. throw. 
as opposed to Guardado, where his, a little bit of steam is coming out. See, Guardado he's is not, dashing uh, right he's now. He's not, the, up. You he's can not see. the same strong yeah. guy. Yeah. Yeah. You those, see, Guardado's really forcing those power yeah. shots out now. Those hard shots that were landed earlier were hurting Torres. Yeah. Right now, the, Torres is walking through those shots. And maybe the body shots had something to do with it. This fight is playing out exactly how you thought it might, Chris, with Torres gaining the advantage as the fight yep. goes on. Yep. Yep. Nonetheless, great rounds back and forth yeah. between these two in our co-main event. Super lightweight bout here between Kevin Torres in the Diamond Boy Blue and Gold Shorts. Guardado in the Cubanito. And, and good action fight, man. Like, this is good. We we still have four rounds to go. It's, 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 it's insane. If this goes like it's going for the rest of the fight, guys, you get your money's worth from one fight alone here. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I want to take the time to give props to both fighters, man. Halfway through this fight, Jose Guardado just, you know, doing, I mean, excuse me, I said Jose, Saul Guardado coming in and doing what he said he was going to do. He was going to come out here and try to steamroll Kevin Torres, and Kevin Torres completely poised. And let's see what happens. As, uh, as, as we see, look, I, I like to see it again, but look at, look at the sharpness of Kevin Torres here in these replays and that head movement. Picking shots, doubling up to the body. Nice uppercut there, and now we're back into our action here. We're going to our fifth round of the scheduled eight. These two warriors have gone back and forth. Torres, if you're just joining us, was knocked down in the first round early, first nice. minute. Has battled back to, to, to change the, the complexion of this fight. As Guardado starts to back up, hands down. Torres coming forward. Torres landing big shots in the last round as we felt the momentum start to shift. Boom, big miss though from, from the Diamond Boy, recollects himself. Output has gone way, way down for Guardado, guys. I mean, as you can see, what was once a extremely aggressive offensive fighter has is, is become a more of a defensive, retreating fighter looking to counter. Still in that southpaw position, though. You know, he hasn't switched back to his I, his I, natural stance. So I, 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 we just gotta wonder what happened to make him yeah. to make him stay in this. There yeah. he goes. Finally. So, so once again, look at when when you, when you start to feel trouble, you resort back to what you know. Yeah. And and I wonder if it might not be a good idea for him to stay yeah. with yeah. what he knows. See, um, yeah, because he had a little bit of success, right, with yeah. uh, with um, with the southpaw, and there he goes trying to. He did, but it's not effective. It's yeah. just, it's just, it's just. The shots aren't out. hitting the yeah. same. Yeah, Which, he's not effective as when he was out of the orthodox. Yeah, all the damage he done earlier in the fight yeah. was from orthodox, so yeah. you would assume he would. And you know, I believe that hurt him. That body shot, that right hand to the body by Kevin Torres. This is a great test for Torres. See, and, and you see Kevin Torres going to the right. That's why he's getting hit with the left. He has to go the other way to his left. Like there he that. goes. Yeah, I you're think taking away that other hand. Starting to figure it out, but he's got to make sure he keeps that that front foot on the nice. outside there, which he did, and is able to land effectively yeah. and not worry so much about that that big counter. But you see, yeah. he steps back into orthodox, does Cubanito, yeah. and uh, I, he's almost imploring Torres yeah. to come at him. Looking to counter now, doesn't have the energy to move forward, so trying to catch Torres coming in. And he switches back to Southpaw again. Oh, nice Torres left hook. chasing him down. Oh, slip yeah. and rip from Torres. Yeah, and, and what I thought at the beginning where Torres needed to be is later on in the fight is happening. You know, you, you see the... The, the tendencies by Guardado kind of deteriorating a yeah. little bit, you know? Slowly, slowly getting worn down by what's a, what's a true professional in Torres. This is, this is where you see the professional in a boxer. Oh, big right hand. Another big That's right hand right there. Torres. As Guardado comes see? forward at the end of that fifth round. That, that right there, Torres is the one that whole round. And that's, that's risky. You don't have to do that in exchange with a stronger fighter because he's opening himself up in, in between punches. You won the round, go back to your corner. But that benefits Guardado right there because 
You, you know, you know what? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna give you the counterpart to okay. that. I think, uh, I think that's the right move to do. To know for Guardado to know that if he tries to muscle his way in, he's gonna be met with force. So, I think that that uh, Torres did the right thing there in, in fighting back the way he did. Well, you gotta think about it like this. Maybe Torres is thinking. He's trying to steal this round from me right now. That, that and too. I gotta put yeah. my foot down and absolutely that, make sure that no matter what, there's no denying that this is my round, you know? Because you know, a fighter can do that. He can he can get out worked for two and a half minutes and then spend 30 seconds going going ham and sometimes steal rounds that way. So Maybe that's going on in the mind of Kevin Torres. I'd love to interview both of these fighters after yeah. this fight and see I what wanna, they were thinking. I want to know why I'd he love to watch softball. it with them. I want to watch it with them and say, yeah. what are you thinking here, guys? And it seems to me, um, maybe to you guys as well, that uh, Torres is kind of inching his way crawling his way back into into this fight. Oh, I think he's more than no, crawling he, his he's, way he's back, back in. He's back in the yeah, fight, I think, absolutely. I think he's back I, in the I, fight. I think he's... Uh, well, I, I well, think he's taking. I think he's taking control of this fight at this yeah. point. Well, you know? well, the first two rounds definitely for for Guardado. Well, uh, Maybe yeah. even the third round. That's yeah. why I'm saying. Oh, oh, um, oh yes, yeah. yeah as far as scorecards. Yes, yes. yes. as far as yes. scorecards. Yes. yes, definitely. No, no, no. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. So Torres is taking control. control yeah. yeah. But on the cards. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'm talking about the cards. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, good point, Chris. I wasn't really even thinking about the cards. I was just thinking about momentum and who's yeah. in control right now. But yes, if you go back to the earlier rounds, with mm. it's oh, great sure. work. So it, there's, there, there was some making up to do for Torres. And let's not forget that's a 10-8 round, that first round, because Torres was knocked down. So that's an extra point off there. Yeah. And that's very smart by, by Torres to, to go to the body, considering how how strong what Guardado was at the beginning, man. Yeah, yeah you got to try to break, he, he break down that body He now. doesn't look like the same guy anymore. No, like I said, he's retreating. He's looking to counter instead of create He's offense. still landing his shots. He is times, landing good shots, But they're, they don't have the same A lot of steams. A lot of steams off it now. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't think... Uh, Cubanito has the ability to really hit and hurt Torres unless it's a perfect, a not, perfectly timed shot at this point. Ball. Yeah, not as a softball. And, and, and you gotta wonder if this right and he's yeah. that right hand. He hasn't really used it with power. I mean, he's yeah. poking the jab with it, but you haven't seen him throw big right hands. I wonder if maybe something happened to that hand. Nice. Yeah, we have to see. The only one he is throwing hard is that left hand. Yeah, yeah. you're right. And right there, he pity pats even yeah. with the, even with the with the left hand there too, but the I, right hand might, does not throw it hard. And he's got it all the you know he's got his hands all the way down, yeah. you know, and, and you just gotta wonder what's what's going on inside his head, what he's fighting through. Yeah. But but steam is off his bunches definitely because oh. he just hit Kevin twice right now. Kevin just took yeah. it like nothing. Ke Kevin's coming on strong yeah. here. Yeah. Very Kevin's strong. taking over the fight now. He took it over the two rounds ago. Yeah, and now 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 he's making it making up uh, and then maybe he's making it up and getting ahead on the scorecards in this Ooh, round. Yeah. Good right. body work by by Torres there. This is the sixth of eight rounds, so after this we'll have two more rounds if it if it gets through this round. And he's he's throwing he's throwing hard shots to the body, but he's touching to the head. He's touching to the head as Torres and ripping to the body. Good, good lord, this is an incredible fight. Yeah. Uh, as a fight forth. fan, I'm just sitting here in awe, in amazement of these warriors laying it on the line. Such a display of heart. Oh, nice right hand, but then counter right hand from Torres. Torres looking strong in the later rounds of this fight, guys. So, G, I wanted to ask you why we have you. Uh, you know, you recently took the cross into the promotion yes. uh, game, uh, part of boxing. And how is that going for you? How are you liking uh, promotion, being in, in King Geo Promotions? It's going great. Uh, there's a lot of talent in Northern California. Oh, um, yeah, absolutely. A lot, a lot of talent. Um, like I said, I'm working on a card in June. I will be fighting for the title of that fight. I'm bringing back uh, one of the... Uh, one of the best, uh, I'm not sure that flyweight at 114 from Stockton, California. I'm bringing Marquito. Yeah, he'll be coming back after a year. Nice. I'm excited for that. And uh, I'm excited for my fight. And then I'm bringing back some of the guys from tonight. I'm, br I'm bringing back Adrian. He did a very oh, good oh, fight. Oh, man. Debut, great debut, yeah, man. Yeah. He looked like he's a, a veteran. Yeah, yeah. A, a well seasoned yeah. veteran in yeah. there in his yeah. debut. 
And as we head into the seventh round, let's take a look at some action from that last sixth round. As you see Torres stepping back and landing some big shots here right at the end of the round. It was, it was basically back and forth this whole round, just like it has this whole fight. And uh, we're back right back to the action here as Torres, the diamond boy, Kevin Torres, in the navy blue and gold trunks taking on Saul Guardado in the white trunks. Guardado knocked Torres down in the first round, but Torres has slowly inched his way back and Seems like more, he's more in retreat, retreat now. Oh, definitely, he's a um, defensive mode. He's, he's not the mode. offensive fighter anymore that he was the first two rounds. Uh, he got probably got tired. Maybe he heard. I really want, I'm really, really uh, want to know what, after the fight why About he the switch. switched. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. makes no sense. He, he was effective. He was winning the fight. He went southpaw, and the whole fight just turned on him. And um, fortunately, it went right for Kevin Torres because he's only, only defeated against the southpaw. But it's, I mean, maybe uh, Guardado's not even, a, you know, it's not a real southpaw. That's why he's, he's not having the effect. Well, and you know, and, 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 and even if Guardado says, "Oh, let me switch up to see if this works," because I know he has trouble with southpaws. Yeah. Once he doesn't have trouble with you, you as go a back, southpaw, yeah. he would think you would yeah, go, you go back, back to right? your to your original uh, stance, and he's not. He hasn't done it so.
Kevin Torres just doubled up his right hand about 10 seconds ago, and, and it worked. That's what you should have been doing. Ooh, from the beginning, you're right. You mentioned that earlier. Yeah. Nice yeah. like jab there. And he's catching from with Torres. the left hand. Where that was catching with the left hand because he's going to his right. He's locking to the right. Oh, nice. Torres starting to push forward. Torres starting to put it on, but they yeah, turn hooks he's, there. He's definitely sealing the victory here if he yeah. wins this round. Yeah. Absolutely. If he wins it strong. I just like to see a young up and coming prospect like this nice. bite his mouthpiece and do what it takes here in this eighth round. Oh, and a hard one nice, too by, by nice Torres. Nice right hand lands for Torres. Guardado takes it well and, and losing, losing, losing starch throughout the fight. I tell you what, Guardado definitely has got a great chin because he's eating some big shots. By late, Kevin Torres, yes. Late in the rounds too, not early, early in the fight is one thing, but later when you're tired, you're still eating shots. It goes to show he's well conditioned and we questioned if he was gonna be able to keep a pace. And even though he's not keeping the same pace, it's not like he's completely Ooh. falling off. And, and even lands a big left hand hooks. on Torres they here in the corner. Hooks. I don't know if Torres got buzzed, but Torres was doing the better work. And he, yeah, Torres got a, he got hit with a, a pretty flush hook himself there in that exchange. Nice. You see, he goes to his left. He's able to easily tap, tap him with the jab. Because the southpaw. Ten seconds left, guys. Eighth and final round. Co made it. Oh, oh nice, nice left again. hook. Oh, who's going to put a stamp on this round? Torres says, yeah, let's nice. go. Good fight. I Big. believe it was Torres I, to, I, I, to put a stamp yeah. at the end of the round there, landing a left hook. Um, it seems to me. Uh, that Guardado is the weird of the two, you know, uh, despite Kevin Torres uh, facing a knockdown and a Fight fans, welcome back from beautiful Tijuana, Mexico. Coming over from Big Punch Arena, here from another night of boxing. We got six professional bouts scheduled for your entertainment tonight. We're in over for a treat, guys. So, coming with me, my very own dear friend, San Diego Kid, Chris Martin. Hey, Chris, how are you tonight? Fantastic, Gerardo, ready to go for the fights. Uh, excited for uh, a good night of boxing. Oh yeah, we're, we're in for a treat. Uh, we got a world title going over tonight. 12 rounder, King Gio, Giovanni Gonzalez versus Arenas for a 12 rounder for our main event of the evening. So Chris, what are you, how are your expectations tonight here? Uh, I'm expecting a, a good fight and let's just say title. That's not, I don't want to label it yet as a world title. It's not a recognized uh, body, um, recognized organization, um, but but a title, yet a title, and, and this is a, a good main event here we have in Tijuana. That's a good pointer right there. And uh, 12 rounds, 
not everybody can go 12 rounds. Chris, how tough is that? Yeah, not everybody can go 12 <laughs> rounds. I, uh, I got the chance to speak to uh, Giovanni Gonzalez. He said, I know everybody says it. He said this, I know everybody says it, but I had the best training camp I've <laughs> ever had. We'll see if it plays out here tonight. Everybody says that they had the best training camp until they don't. Until they lose. <laughs> and, then, and then something went wrong. But today, uh, we'll see. I, I felt that he was very genuine in, in his speech. And I think today uh, he's here to prove it. Well, we'll see tonight in action, in action Stockton's very own King Gio Giovanni Gonzalez. And we are, we're on our final preparations as we're getting ready to head it, hand it over to Pablo uh, for another night of huge, big action fights going on. Armando Regis Garcia. Y también de Tijuana. Marcos Juárez. Well, we're getting ready for our very first fight, and we just want to say, guys, we're, we're really, really sorry. We apologize for the unprofessionalism because we are, we acknowledge the fact that we are starting late AF tonight, Chris. But, well, local commission wasn't ready for us yet, but hopefully we will see some good action quality fights uh, from now on, Chris. Yeah, uh, way late. Um, if you're Mexican, anybody, any Mexican fans that we have out there, you know this is not late. This is on time, right? <laughs> this is on time. Yeah, well, Mexican time, that is. Uh, it's, uh, I, 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 I feel heartbroken for that, uh, that comment, Chris. It's hey, man, I, 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 I identify as Mexican. I want to let everybody know. The last name is Martin. It's not Martinez, <laughs> but I identify as Mexican. Well, we are very sorry. We acknowledge the fact that we are starting late, but we are going to make it up for you guys tonight with some very quality fights, high action, starting in just a matter of seconds, fight fans. So uh, keep the comments going. We are seeing the live comments on Fight Hub. We are seeing the, the live comments on Global Sports Streaming. So keep those comments going. We are going to read them, all right? So, uh, and well, uh, Chris, 
Two weeks ago, we were in beautiful Guadalajara. Beautiful Guadalajara. Not calling any fight. We were calling a Chavez fight. Talk about that experience, Chris. Man, it was definitely one of the best experiences of my life. Um, I actually didn't get the big show like you did. Uh, I did the, the undercard on the BN Sports, but yet, yet um, I got to enjoy the, the fights themselves. You know, I was ringside for El Gran Campeón Mexicano. I was there, um, happy to be there. And it was a it was a great experience, man. 100 percent. It was one, one of the experiences of my life. It was uh, you, you say it well. It was an experience of my life as well, because my heart was all for Chavez. I, I almost got into tears calling that fight because you see that Chavez is all heart. He was ready to go full out. He said to us during the fighter interviews, he said to us, what a beautiful thing would be. To die in the ring. He actually and said to, that. Yeah, and, yeah. and to hear Chavez, el gran campeón mexicano, say that, oh man, it give, it gives me the yeah. goosebumps. Yeah, that day uh, I was there sitting with sitting there with you, and it kind of gave me gave me the chills, like you know, because you could see the fact that you know he was very genuine about what he said, and uh, very passionate also. Um, so the people reacted. You know, um, you the people, you guys saw it. You guys, you guys definitely reacted to it. And you give him all the love. Can't say the same thing for his kids, because there were some mixed feelings here and there. But um, and here are some of the clips that that we got from Guadalajara. But an experience of itself. It, it, it was a great night of boxing. Definitely it was a great night of boxing. A great night of action. The beautiful people from Guadalajara were, were very well, heart. Uh, very. Uh, they, they were very warm. Uh, very warm, yeah. Yeah, that, that, very that's warm. The... It was beautiful. It was a beautiful experience. We got to call the fights of uh, both uh, Chavez Jr. against Anderson Silva. How about that fight, huh? Yeah, man. Um, something that leading up to it, I didn't expect. Fight week, kind of expected it a little bit more. Um, and when it got to the fight, I was a little bit nervous for Chavez Jr., not going to lie. And as soon as the, the fight started, Anderson Silva took to... to to boxing and boxing very well and you know he, he took the victory man um I, f I feel good i feel I, i feel happy for the mma community because they they got a win over a, a over a boxer yeah the, mma guys mma fighters are always coming to our sport to boxing and they always uh, most of the time they get their asses handed to them right Absolutely. so this time anderson silva and just the other way around i want to mention that too just yeah. the other way around you know what yeah I mean? definitely so. but we're ready to go Hand it, handing it over to Pablo as we speak. Damas y caballeros, esta es la tercera llamada. Comenzamos. Y en nombre de King Geo Promotions, en asociación con GSS Global Sports Streaming, les damos la más cordial de bienvenidas a esta, la que viene siendo la tradición boxística en el Big Punch Arena. Desde la frontera más visitada del mundo, Tijuana, Baja California, México. Este evento es sancionado por la Honorable Comisión de Box, Lucha Libre y Artes Marciales Mixtas de esta ciudad de Tijuana, Presidente Cristian Granados. Comisionados de Boxeo, Alejandra Ayala y Juan Manuel Cardona. El Jefe de Servicios Médicos, el Dr. Benjamín Sandoval. Al frente del tiempo, César Fernández. Sus tres jueces... Paul Ríos, Iván Velasco y Alberto Martínez. Su referí para este combate, el experimentado Fernando Rentería. Ahora bien, amigos aficionados, prepárense. Cuatro rounds de combate en la división de peso gallo. And ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready for four rounds of boxing in the Benton Weight Division. Interesting first. The fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears blue trunks with gold trim. He officially weighs in 118 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul. Vistiendo pantaloncillo color azul con oro, con un peso oficial de 118 libras. He stands with two professional bouts. Cuenta con dos combates profesionales representando a Tijuana, Baja California. Armando Reyes García. And his opponent across the ring, standing in the red corner. He wears black trunks with white and green. He officially weighs in the same, 118 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja, vistiendo pantaloncillo de color negro con verde y blanco, con un peso idéntico de 118 libras. And tonight, he makes his pro debut, haciendo su debut profesional también de esta ciudad de Tijuana, Baja California. Marco 
Instructions. Con las indicaciones finales, su referí, el profesor Fernando Rentería. For rounds, cuatro asaltos. Eh, eh, mucho cuidado con los cabezazos, golpes en la nuca, espalda, bajo el cinturón, están prohibidos. Choca su guante, suerte, gana el mejor. And here we go for the opening bout of the evening. Marcos Juarez, pro debut versus Armando Reyes of Tijuana, 0-2. And they come out firing. Not too much of a feel-out round right away, Gerardo. Why a feel-out round? Why? Why on a professional debut and a night and a night like this one, right? <laughs> a hot night. You want to you wanna get in? You uh, want to get out? And, 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 and literally, it is, it is quite hot here in Benny. It is very hot. <laughs> It has to. It has to take uh, its toll on the fighters, right, Chris? Being such a hot venue as we are tonight. I think on a, on a later on later rounds it will. Um, maybe at the beginning now. Ooh. Nice combination by Marco uppercut and then goes over with the left hook, changing levels. Oh, they exchanging they exchanging punches in the middle of the ring. Juan nice. landing a Over good right uppercut hand. right he's there. Hurt. He's hurt. He's Not, hurt. Well, well, Reyes is coming back strong. Oh, overhand right. Another one. Another right. To the body. Oh, this is a fight now. This is a fight now. Welcome to professional boxing, Marcos. Marcos Juarez being welcomed by Armando Reyes to the professional ranks. Ooh, nice exchange again back and forth action in the very first round fight fans Ooh, another right hand for Armando Reyes Ooh, nice nice combination right hand left hand right hand and and maybe maybe Juarez thought he was gonna have an easy night with Armando Reyes being 0-2 it, it, it's not the case for Marcos Juarez if he did think that I don't think that he does anymore. Ooh, that was a good shot by Juarez. Maybe Reyes felt that a little bit, but he comes right back with a one-two and a left hook and a couple overhand rights. Marco saying that he's not hurt, but you know what that means, fight fans. Ooh, another hook landed there by oh. Juarez. Very good shots. Very good exchange. And once again, this is not a feel-out round. We're two minutes into the bout. Wow, and these guys are chunking them. I feel like we're like in a barroom brawl. Like wh whoever loses pays the check, Chris. <laughs> in this case, I will die. <laughs> I will die before I pay the check. Tijuana is not that expensive, Chris. Come on. Okay, okay. San Diego prices, guys. San Diego prices, you guys. You guys don't want to know anything about that. Last 10 seconds, guys, of a very long first round. Ooh, one right hand, one last right hand. Yeah, absolutely entertaining round by both fighters. Mr. Marcos Juarez making his pro debut, being welcomed into the professional ranks by Armando Reyes. Great, great start, great start to the night. Uh, we were kind of antsy, we were kind of irritated, the fact that we had to wait so long, and it's hot in here. I'm not gonna lie to you, it's, it's hot in here. It's, it's hot. We came in with suits, <laughs> it turned into casual Friday. <laughs> we were, we were wearing suits. We were suits. wearing suits. You, you came over with a tie. I, my tie yeah, was on. Yeah, the tie, tie, tie lost, the tie yeah. is lost, man. You well, made, it, you made a suggestion, I, was like, I think you should take off your tie, and at first I was like, nah, I'm good. Um, as, <laughs> but right away I had to take it off. As we see the action here, these two guys are chunking them. And Marcos it, Juarez and Armando Reyes. And I, I, I think that Armando Reyes' his right hand is uh, is a big uh, ticket for him tonight. What yeah, do you think, it, Chris? It's, it landed a lot in the first round. Um, I really do think that he won that round, Mr. Armando Reyes, over over Juarez. You I know, think so but, too. But we'll see the composure. See if he's 
he's able to put it together is what it but you know what in this style of a fight anything can happen i mean literally I, it, this is not something that you read on a cereal box i mean in a, this type of fight anything can happen because they're they are going all out tonight and this is the second round yeah, second round, if I'm not mistaken, Juarez is already turning south by. Sometimes when fighters do that, it seems as though they're trying to find something. something. Like kind of desperate? Can, can that be, uh, Chris? Yeah, I think so, because Ray is landing a lot of punches. And once again, I don't think Juarez really expected to see what he is seeing from, uh, from Armando Reyes. Right hand to the body from Armando Reyes. Again! And combinations, overhands, to the body, body shots. Marco comes over with left hand off his home. The exchange jab in the middle of the ring. And, and I'm gonna go ahead and mention something, that we have the family of Marcos Juarez right behind us, right? And when it, it might be his girlfriend, might be his sister, but she said, right before the fight started, said the other guy doesn't, looks very mean. And I see that from Armando <laughs> Reyes too. He looks very mean here tonight. He, lo he looks mean. He, he looks mean. mean. He's a mean mofo at phantom weight. <laughs> a real mean guy. Ooh, Ooh that nice. was a good shot by Juarez to the body. He should stick to it. He should try to repeat. I don't know about that exchanging guards, uh, Chris. What What are your thoughts on uh, Marcos Juarez uh, switch hitting? Um, considering it's his pro debut, Stick to what you know. Stop, stop changing guards. That's why we have a professional boxer with us, guys, tonight, just to get us and talk us through this action. In hey, order but, to but, but like you said, better, Gerardo, he, yeah. he might shut me up. Look, he's having a little bit of success here and there, you know. But but here's what here's what I say. Ooh, nice left hand. Here's what I say to young fighters. Yes. You can throw punches from the southpaw position if you're an orthodox, no problem. The difficulty is the defense. The defense, the defense is gonna be the hard part. Definitely. And you know what? I think that he's efficient on the southpaw position because uh, Armando is Ooh, big opening That was a up. good body shot. Once again, landed by Juarez. And you're right, it is efficient. He does it well. But once again, like he gets clipped a couple times when he turns southpaw. Last 10 seconds. And I really do think that Marcos Juarez was able to make this round a little bit closer, maybe even taking the round. So on my scorecards, we got 1-1 after two rounds. And just to, just to let the public know, man, th this is something brought to you by Global Sports Streaming, the best in boxing. Uh, the fact that we get to see up-and-comers, guys. Uh, we're not we're not here showing you the pay-per-view fights, you know, Deontay Wilder versus Tyson Fury, but we're showing you who's coming up. Who are you going to see local from Tijuana, from wherever, because we have a few guys from Stockton, California. We got a few guys from, from, from different parts, you know, Modesto, California, Mexicali, uh, different spots, okay? Um, you know, through California and Baja California, Mexico, right? So this, to me, is is what boxing is. You know, we, we see it, we see it flourish, we see it come come to fruition. You know, from beginning to end. That's a great comment, Chris. As we start the third round, uh, ooh, nice right hand by Armando. Uh, yeah, you say it well. We are developing talent. Gold Sports Streaming, King Geo Promotions is uh, betting on the uh, developing of future talent. Uh, this is how fighters are born, right? Mm. So in venues such as this, with opportunities such as this, and I personally love all-rounders because you get to see a lot of action. Not too much rounds for resting because in such a short fight, you cannot leave it to the judge's decision. Yeah, you're right. Um, don't I'm gonna say this, I have over 40 professional fights, and the fights that I remember being some of my hardest were always the one, the four rounders. Uh, one in particular, for whatever reason, his name is, escapes, my, escapes my mind right now, but he was four and two. I think I was about six and oh. After the fight, I greeted him, I told him, dude, that was the hardest fight of my life. <laughs> he said the same, right? You know, um, 
he said it the same, but but that's what I remember. You know, that was the hardest fight. All action, four rounds. All action, are, yeah, all man. Action. You're trying to make your impression on the judges, just like these guys are right now. They haven't stopped throwing from the the first second of the first bell. Ooh, that left hook had bad intentions for Armando Reyes. Very bad intentions, and it, and if Reyes if Reyes is smart, he'll keep throwing the straight hands, the straight one two. When Juarez fucking when Juarez turns southpaw, because you can't you, you can't defend as well as you can when you're orthodox and you're an orthodox fighter. I would like to see uh, Marcos throwing more jabs in the fight, like trying to control the fight, uh, trying to keep Armando off of him with the left jab. And I haven't seen too many jabs in this fight, Chris. From either fighter, you're right. Not too many jabs. And when they throw them, they land them. Wow, that was a good uppercut landed there by Reyes. And another one. And the tide seems to be turning again. First round Reyes, second round Juarez, and maybe Reyes taking this round again. We may start seeing some fatigue, but well, it's it's very <laughs> it's very usual for two guys that have been throwing for uh, almost three rounds now, non-stop action to take a breather, right, Chris? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're throwing, Ooh. they're throwing a lot of punches. But something that you mentioned earlier, Gerardo, the heat is the heat going to be a factor? And I told you maybe in the later rounds. I think after three hard rounds like we just saw right now, it'll definitely be a factor coming into the fourth round. Who's in better shape? Um, who was hydrated before the fight? Because you're gonna lose all, you know, you're gonna lose lose all those electrolytes <laughs> during during the fight. You know, who's more hydrated? Um, who's in better shape? Definitely. Right. So right. I have a technical question for you. If you're if you're the trainer, if you're in the corner of Marcos Juarez, his professional debut right now. Uh, most you you, uh, you may be uh, I might be wrong here, but I think that he's losing the fight. So you're in Marcos' corner. Marcos is a uh, professional debut. What do you say to him? Um, so you're going into the fourth and final round of this bout. Um, you need to win this round to in my on our card, both our cards, right? Judges might have it different. Definitely. Um, you need you need this round to tie. If not, you tell him go for the knockout. Right now, I would say dig to the body because in the first round when he won, he had success. Excuse me, the second round that he won. Definitely. That's why we have a professional fighter with us, taking us through the fights. And that's Go a good hook. Body. Landed by yeah. is there. I, I don't think I don't think we're going to see much uh, body work uh, on this fourth and final round. I'm pretty sure they're going to go all out. Yeah, they're still fighting. Hunt. They're still fighting over the tab. Gerardo. No, you pay. <laughs> no, you pay. <laughs> And then again, Marcos uh, throwing us a southpaw. Ooh, Ooh, nice body shot there by Reyes. Follows it up with an overhand right and an uppercut. Just a quick shout out for the, the guys on the comments on uh, watching the fights live on Fight Hub. <laughs> they uh, they're uh, commenting on um, Armando's uh, man bun, so that's sexy a, man bun that is, right? That's a very sweet man bun. <laughs> it's almost a non-existent man bun. Yeah, it's it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's there. It's, a, yeah. it's there. You just have to you just have to search for it, but it's right there. <laughs> Ooh, nice, nice bending work uh, Ooh, for Marcos. Nice uppercut there, landed by Reyes, and he might be upsetting the. The story here for, for Marco Suarez in his professional debut because he is outlanding, in my opinion, Juarez right now is Reyes. Even though they're both seem tired. I agree. I, I, I think that Armando is dictating the pace. Uh, volume is definitely uh, on his side and uh, effectiveness, I think so as well. But mm, do, not, uh, do not take Marcos for granted. He's all there. 
He's uh, completely conscient, and uh, you can see it on his eyes that he's completely, he wants this W, Chris. He definitely wants to win his professional debut. He's fighting like it. Just sometimes the skill does not match the, the will. intention. There you go, the will, better word. Ooh. Wow, good one two landed by Reyes again. And the man you are hearing, fight fans, is I'm pretty sure that this Marcos is that. So because he's he's really loud. He's he's really <laughs> loud and he's directly behind us. <laughs> and closing the show, we'll let you guys enjoy the fight. With a little <laughs> extra shots thrown yeah. in there by Reyes. We got some He's, overtime action. <laughs> yeah, he seals the deal on my card. Three to one. Armando Reyes over pro debuter Marcos Juarez. Armando Reyes, in my opinion, deserves to have his first professional win going to one and two. Solid one and two in the Bantamweight division. I agree. Let's see if the, uh, if the judges see it that way. You can never know, honestly. Like, it's, it's worst thing. Look, I'm gonna tell you right now. Worst thing you can have it, in my opinion, is a draw. You give it. You give it. A, you give a. You give a victory to Marcos Juarez. I think it's, it's definitely unjust for Armando Reyes, um, even though we have seen worse decisions. But um, that being said, what's up with the tape? I know you guys can't see right now, but it seems like a little wonky the way the the hand wraps of Armando Reyes is here. We might be having a little situation where not legal. Ah, okay, never mind. Excuse me. I misspoke. It's tape from the gloves. And once again, I know you guys couldn't see it. I could see it. He's right in front of me. And we want to take real quick, uh, we want to thank our, our sponsor, Lobotic Incorporated. Republic Realty Company. Stellar credit. We got Game Up Nutrition at Game Up Nutrition. We got Models Sporting Goods. Got to go to Moe's at Models. We got Cleaning Contractors as well. CES Cleaning Contractors. Thank you to Stay Sharp Barbershop. And to It's Hem Pro, It's Hem Bro, as well as GV Kennels. Thank you so much, guys, for your sponsorship. As we head over to Pablo, who's got the decision. Damas y caballeros, después de cuatro rounds de combate, nos vamos con las tarjetas de los jueces. Ladies and gentlemen, after four rounds of boxing, we now go to the judges' scorecards. I can't hear what he said. Los tres jueces, all three judges, Paul Rios, Iván Velasco, and Alberto Martinez have the same scores of 39 to 37. Coinciden en números 39 a 37 los tres jueces. For your winner, by the way, of unanimous decision, su vencedor por la vía de la decisión unánime, Armando Gunga Reyes. Well, there you go, five fans. Armando Reyes got his first professional W. That makes his record one y and two. Para su rival, and a valiant effort from Marcos Juarez. Armando Reyes gets his first win in his professional career. And I want to let everybody know right now, I'm going to take pokes at president, owner, of Fight Hub TV that I got it right, three rounds to one. I may be coming for your spot <laughs> as the unofficial scorer for PBC, for Showtime, for ESPN. I do them all. As we see some uh, replay of all the action, and you really can't go wrong with uh, with what minute or what seconds can the truck give us on the replays because it was basically all 
action, Chris. It was all action, man. These guys didn't stop throwing, man. So it was exciting to see from the from the very first second. Like they came out, and neither one of them wanted to pay the tab, and they just started going at it. <laughs> That's 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 uh that's one for the for the books, right? Uh, yeah, yeah. Who wants to pay the, the, the tab? You pay the tab. No, you no, pay. You, the tab. you pay it. You pay it. Okay, we're working on the second fight of the night, fight fans, uh, between Modestos, California, and Manuel Fernandez against Alexis Garcia, and here we are. How good looking are we, Chris? Huh. The Mexicali oh, Baja California. <laughs> Not bad Manuel. at all, right? So, uh, better than the Ring Girls, I hope. Definitely not better than Pablo Flores, right? No, no, there. no, no. no, no, no. 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 Uh, James Look. Bond of boxing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jaime, Jaime Bond. Jaimito Bond. Jaimito Bond. I like it. Y de Ramos Mejía, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Gonzalo Carlos Dallera. So real quick, I just want to say I just messed up. I saw the uh, fight card wrong. We are going to see the second fight of the night between Gonzalo Carlos Dallera from Buenos Aires, Argentina, uh, going against Manuel Martinez from Mexicali, Mexico. The land of the heat. Calor. Yeah. Mucho calor. If it's hot in Tijuana, it's oh. on fire in Mexicali. Definitely. Damas y caballeros, King Geo Boxing Promotions in asociación con VIP, the best in boxing, y GSS Global Sports Streaming. Presentan este cotejo pactado a cuatro asaltos en la división de peso super ligero. Let's get ready for four rounds of boxing in the super lightweight division. Your three judges going this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces, Paul Rios, Iván Velasco y Alberto Martínez. Your referee in charge of the action. Para medir las acciones, el profesor Fernando Renteria. Interesting first. The fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears black trunks with white trim. He officially weighs in 140 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul. Vistiendo pantaloncillo negro con blanco. Con un peso de 140 libras. He stands with three professional bouts. Cuenta con tres combates profesionales de la ciudad de Mexicali, Baja California, México. Manuel Martinez. And his opponent across the ring standing in the red corner. He wears green trunks with white and red. He officially weighs in the same. 140 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja, vistiendo pantaloncillo color verde con blanco y rojo, con un peso idéntico de 140 libras. He stands with a professional record, consisting of eight victories, 12 losses, and six of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de ocho victorias, 12 derrotas, y seis de esas victorias por la vía del cloroformo, representando a su natal. Ramos Mejía, Buenos Aires, Argentina. Gonzalo, Carlos Dallera. And now with the final instructions, dando las indicaciones finales, su referee en turno, el profesor Fernando Rentería. Four rounds, cuatro saltos. Cuatrazos, golpes en la nuca, espalda, debajo del cinturón, con los codos y el antebrazo, están prohibidos, ¿ok? Choca sus guantes y que gane mejor, suerte. All right, fight fans, we're getting ready for the second fight of the evening. And uh, between Gonzalo, Carlos, Dallera, and Manuel Martinez. All the way from Argentina, the land of Sergio El Maravilla Martinez. Against uh, a Martinez, so that's, that's a good omen. Must be. Good connection there. Get out. Multicolor trunks for Gonzalo Carlos Dallera and black 
with white stripes for Manuel Martinez. Right away, we see not that much action as we saw on the first bout. Oh, scratch that. <laughs> no, it, it's definitely hard to follow an exciting fight like the like the last one. Well, exciting to to a certain degree, right? Those guys, those guys chunked it. Those definitely. guys, those guys uh, let everything go. And I just want to acknowledge the fact that Gonzalo looks like a freaking middleweight. And keep in mind, this is a super lightweight, 140 pounds. And Gonzalo looks... He looks pretty beefy, right? Yeah. And, and one thing that we didn't get to ask, we, we had no fighter. We only had a fighter meeting with the last two fights. Uh, but here, uh, Mr. Gonzalo Dayera coming from from Argentina so I w I'd like to know if you reside somewhere close here to, to be doing a local show like he's doing does he reside here in Mexico Southern California where did where does he live I'm, I'm pretty sure he lives here I'm interested yeah Ooh, Ooh, nice nice body, body shots oh Ooh, again more. those are thudding shots and we're right here ringside and they sound pretty vicious, sir. Yeah, you could, you could, you could have felt the uh, shockwave on those body punches. And and once again, the fact that you mentioned that you know super lightweight, but this guy looks, you know, he looks a lot bigger than Manuel Martinez does. He does. Gallera. Martinez still looks like he's filling into his body, kind of like I do. <laughs> he's still developing. <laughs> he's still developing, yeah. I turn 35 next week. Oh, to my man body. Ooh, that, that, that's danger zone. That's a danger zone for Manuel Martinez. He should not be in the corner. He should not lean his body uh, to the uh, to the ropes with uh, huge Gonzalo going at it to the body with bad intentions. Ooh. Once again, dicks I, into the I body. I really do think that was kind of folded him a little bit. And whenever oh, a yeah, fighter, you can see it. You whenever can see it. a fighter lifts his leg like Martinez just did, <laughs> that usually means you hurt him to the body. And right away, fight fans, fight fans you can mm. see that Manuel, Manuel Martinez's elbows out angle towards the sky. You know what I mean? He's not really protecting his body. I'm guessing that Gonzalo saw that as an opportunity to dig in with those body punches as we uh, end the round number one. Pretty decent action between Dayera and Martinez. You know, um, both of them with losing records. I gotta, I gotta put that out there. You know, both of them with losing records. Um, trying to get into the win column for Mr. Martinez. First one. Mentally, does that help? Does that uh, contributes in a negative, a positive way? Going, in, going to a night like this with a losing record, Chris. Um, Any special pr uh, pressure that the fighter can feel? Honestly, I, I, I wouldn't know how to answer that. I wouldn't I know, know because I won so no. many fights. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's not the case. That's not the case. But, but I know, well, well in, in my later fights, um, I, I have lost. You know, like it happens to a lot of fighters. Right. We get old. Uh, we right. face, you know, younger up-and-coming fighters. Right. And it happens, right? But, but to me, the, the mentality was always to win, you know? And I believe it'd be the same for, for both these fighters. The mentality is there to win. Is there added pressure? I don't think so. Um, those are hard shots landed by Diana to the to the body, and Martinez still seems to be having trouble, and his legs don't don't seem to be all the way there. Yeah, Gonzalo Diana's strategy is very clear to me right now. He's investing with those body punches, and it is it is working for him. That's, that strategy is it is working for him. And we uh, mentioned from the beginning the fact that he's looked bigger. He looks bigger. He he's. He's, he's the more physically strong. Ooh, hard uppercut. And it proves right there the fact that he what, he didn't land such a flush shot, but he, he I mean he's just much bigger than him. Hits harder. Oh, I think we're watching the end of the fight. Very close to being the end of the fight. Yeah, Gonzalo looking like he's uh, he's stocking his spray right now. And, 
being being the Yera, you can't just wait for the one perfect Ooh. shot. You can't wait for that perfect shot, even though he seems like it, like he's just waiting, 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 because it is gonna cut most likely. But set it up. Throw some jabs in there. There you go. Throw some jabs in there. Move your head. Set it up. That's a great comment. Set it up. Not just look for the highlight punch. Right? Try to set it up with punches, right? With feints. And now that. Ooh, huge left hook for Gonzalo Dallera. And I was about to say, as Martinez is backpedaling, it's not. <laughs> it's not the ideal way to be pushing back the way he is with his hands down. And there you go. Proved it. Ooh. Uppercut. Another hard uppercut there landed by Gallera. Keep in mind, folks, we still have uh, less than a minute left on this second round. So all the time in the world for Gonzalo Gallera to look for that knockout. And it seems like Martinez's tires are, are near flat. He's got his mouth open. Yeah. He's, he's not very stable, and that was a weird shot thrown by both fighters. No, that's it. And the ref that's stopped it. Yeah, the fight. Nah, Dayera, Dayera doesn't want to be here. Martinez. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm Day sorry. Dayera does. Manuel, <laughs> Manuel Martinez uh, didn't want to be here. Good job by the referee st on stopping the fight. Yeah, uh, Manuel Martinez didn't want anymore. Uh, good KO victory, good TKO victory for Gonzalo Carles Dallera, all over from Buenos Aires, Argentina, which uh, this guy can fight, and I'm pretty sure that he can uh, he can play soccer as well. Argentina, all, almost like the national sport. If you guys, if you, if you guys, you guys can't see my face right now, but I, I made a. I, yeah. made a, I made a frowny face at Cadarro. You're not very amused by my comment. Yeah, I made a very frowny face at Cadarro. <laughs> I apologize. Frowny face emoji. <laughs> Somebody type that up on the comments for Cadarro. Thank we got, you. We got some comments over on Fight Hub TV as well as Gold Sports Streaming on the YouTube channel. So And, and I got some LOL faces, so people <laughs> did like my comment. No. I don't know what to say about that one. But you know what? He probably does play soccer. I'll, I'll go ahead and agree with you there. He probably does play soccer. But good, entertaining fight. And bring you nothing but the best in boxing from Global Sports Streaming presents Best in Boxing. There you go. Caballeros, tenemos el tiempo oficial. Dos minutos 38 segundos en el segundo asalto. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the official time: two minutes and 38 seconds in the second round. Declare your winner by the way of TKO victory. Su vencedor por la vía del knockout técnico de Buenos Aires, Argentina, Gonzalo Carlos Dallera. So Mr. Marcus Herbold went ahead and said, yes, he can play soccer as well. He agreed with us or with you, Gerardo. And once again, we're going we're gonna to uh, thank our sponsors, Lobotic Incorporated, Republic Realty, Stellar Credit, as well as our friends from Game Up Nutrition. You can hook Hook with them, with them on social media, at Game Up Nutrition. Models, got to go with Bose, at Models as well. CES, cleaning con contractors. Our friends from Stay Sharp Barbershop. Best barbershop on the 209. Nice. It's hemp, bro. It's, it's hemp, bro. I like that. I like that's a good model right there. As well as our friends from GV Kennels. Acampo Tree Service. Make sure you get that number. KR27 Group. Chill Nutrition. As well as 
Pizza Factory. Best pizza on the 209. Scalp Co. Scalp Micro Pigmentation. And Hand Sling Mask Massage. Once again, thank you all for your sponsorship tonight. And showing a little bit of highlights from those fight from the last fight, excuse me. Um, just those body shots that uh, that Yeda was ripping, and he kept ripping, and you could see the the grimace on Martinez's face over and over. Um, the ref finally did have mercy on him by by stopping the fight. Nothing crazy landed, um, and I want to touch back on that crazy fight. That crazy punch right now from from both of them. Both of them threw a, a weird punch, and to be honest, I don't think that that shot landed by Dayera. But nonetheless, Martinez seems to to be having enough. You know, body language says a lot, um, and body language there said, "I'm close to having enough." Gerardo. Yeah, no mas. Maybe he said no mas. No mas. He looked. He looked. Uh, he looked perplexed from the beginning. Uh, did Martinez didn't seem to have an answer for what Dayera was doing. Dayera definitely seemed, or definitely had the the better, the better boxing. Um, you know, despite having a losing record, eight and twelve improved to nine and twelve with uh, seven knockouts. But despite that, you know, to me he looked good. He looked like a good fighter. You know, a deceiving record of now nine and twelve. Um, which means it's gonna it's gonna land him fights where where he's gonna test young fighters. I guarantee you he's gonna get those calls um, from from big promoters to match him up of, against their young guys, you know. And if you saw this fight, Gonzalo Dayera definitely did have, you know, uh, a good form, um, good punches. He didn't have the best opponent in Manuel Martinez here tonight, but uh, he did what he had to do. Did Dayera, and he got his opponent out of there in in quick time as we get ready for our third bout of the evening coming over from tijuana mexico big punch arena here in beautiful tijuana mexico with another fight of boxing and next fight is going to be emmanuel emmanuel fernandez against alexis garcia emmanuel fernandez coming over from modesto california on a welterweight bout going at it with alexis garcia from mexicali another guy from the hottest place in the world, Mexicali, Mexico. One of the hottest places. It's very hot. It's very it's, hot. It's one of the hottest places. Yeah, man. It's, it's, uh, I, I don't want to be in Mexicali right now. It's hot in here. It's going to be hot as yeah, hell the, the, over there. If you guys could see, if you guys could see, there's a fan right <laughs> behind me. It is our friend right now yeah, hooking, best friend, yeah. hooking us up. <laughs> so once again, we were in suits at the beginning of the day. Uh, we're turned into casual Friday, as you can see my guy right here, All right? Huh? It's no joke. It's, we really got suits. Yeah. <laughs> we got permission from our production manager. Yeah, you guys, you guys could turn it into casual Friday here today. It's a good thing that we 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 didn't have any shorts because or uh, board shorts that is because uh, yeah, otherwise it's, it's, yeah, it took, would be a pretty picture. Took it too far, bro. You That's took it, it far. Yeah, took I, it I took far. it too far. I'm, it. I'm sorry, sorry. And we cut it off there. <laughs> Back to business, ladies and gentlemen. Well, back to business. We are getting ready for our third fight of the evening. Paying it over to Pablo. Alexis Garcia. Once again, Alexis Garcia from Mexicali, Baja California. With a record of... Zero victories and three defeats. And from Modesto, California, USA, Emmanuel Fernandez.
Damas y caballeros, King Geo Boxing Promotions, GSS Global Sports Streaming, and the best in boxing, presentan este cotejo pactado a cuatro asaltos en la división de peso welter. Four rounds of boxing in the welterweight division. Your three judges scoring this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces, Iván Velasco, Paul Rios y Alberto Martínez. Your referee in charge of the action, su referee para este cotejo, Profesor Fernando Rentería. Introducing first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears white trunks with red trim. He officially weighs in 147 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul, vistiendo pantaloncillo color blanco con rojo, con un peso oficial de 147 libras. He stands with three professional bouts. Cuenta con tres combates profesionales de la capital, el Cachanilla, Mexicali, Baja California. Alexis Garcia and his opponent across the ring standing in the red corner he wears white trunks trimmed in black and red he officially weighs in the same 147 pounds y su rival en la esquina roja vistiendo pantaloncillo color blanco con negro y rojo con un peso idéntico de 147 libras he says with a record one victory, no defeats, and that victory coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un récord de una victoria, cero derrotas, y esa victoria por la vía del cloroformo. Hailing out of Modesto, California, USA, Emmanuel Fernandez. And now giving out the final instructions con las indicaciones finales, su referir el profesor Fernando Rentería. Four rounds, cuatro asaltos. Fernández from Modesto, California. Going at it with uh, Alexis Garcia from Mexicali, Mexico. And so I want to I wanna let everybody out there know that uh, Gerardo went ahead and picked Alexis Garcia because his trainer had the, the, the Street, street fighter, fighter logo. The Street Fighter T-shirt. You can never go wrong with a Street Fighter T-shirt. So I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for Alexis right now because of that corner man's uh, uh, T-shirt. That's the best T-shirt on earth right now. He's going to definitely have a hard time against Emmanuel <laughs> Fernandez coming out with that strong jab and looks just like the bigger man in there right away. Yeah, and fighting big as well, Chris. Yeah. Good right hand, good overhand right for uh, Alexis and uh, Emmanuel going at it with his jab, jabbing away. And you can already see, fight fans, the uh, determination on Emmanuel Fernandez's face. Alexis Garcia does not look like a welterweight. Uh, he looks to me like a super featherweight at best. Uh, not a welterweight. You got that right, definitely. He looks small against uh, big Emmanuel Fernandez. And who's fighting big as well. Ooh, huge right hand to the body. Good paint uh, for Emmanuel uh, Fernandez. But showing the true grit of a Mexican warrior. Garcia not taking a step back and throwing back. Alexis Garcia should not lean on the ropes. He should get, he should circle up his opponent. Yeah, that's it. Another huge right hand for Emmanuel Fernandez. And Chris, I just want to point out that uh, we're in the welterweight division. How hot is the welterweight division right now with all the talent, big names? Big the names, man. Errol Spence, you know, uh, Manny Pacquiao coming up in August. You got Bud Crawford, still the top two in my opinion. Um, might be number one, you know, in the welter welterweight division. I honestly think he might have fought the better fighters, but, uh, you know, Errol Spence, has a kind of passing of the torch fight coming in, in August, August 21st against Manny Pacquiao. He can get through there, look spectacular there. We'll see uh, see where we rank him in the in the welterweight division. The check hook by Emmanuel Fernandez. Danny Garcia. Keith Thurman. Keith. Big 
names. Huge talent. Walter Wick Mission is as hot as it has been in, in a long time. Man. In a long time. But, but that's our, actually always one of the, the stellar divisions. You Definitely. Know what I mean? A lot of Oscar, action. Oscar De La Hoya. A lot of speed. Early 2000s, late 90s. And, and I can tell you right now, uh, it doesn't look good for, for Garcia going into the second round after he he barely made it after the first round. Definitely. And uh, props to Emmanuel Fernandez because he didn't he didn't went loco on him, you know? He he stayed poised. He he stayed behind the jab. Good check hooks. Good right hands to the body. He remained uh, cool, right? He did not go all out. And I think it, this is going to be a good experience for Emmanuel Fernandez against an Alexis Garcia who has a big, big uh, challenge in front of him tonight. Definitely. That, that's a good way to put it. He's got a big challenge in front of him. Fernandez kind of walking him down in that first round. To be honest, um, and with everybody else that, that's watching watching us on, on Fight Hub TV, Global Sports Streaming, uh, Garcia was lucky to get out of that first round, man. Fernandez is a much bigger fighter, uh, very well poised. Um, every time he hit him, we're right here under them so we could hear the thud. It sounded like they hurt, man. Definitely. Where we get ready for the second round. Jabbing away, Emmanuel Fernandez. And, and not only is Garcia not as big as Fernandez, he's not as skilled either. Like, the skill's not there. I know you guys can see it out, out, out there on this broadcast. He, he's not as skilled. Cajones he has. Oh, he does. Skill not so much. Ooh. Missed by a mile on that overhand right, and Fernandez punished him with that left hook. That overhand right, it's not going to cut it for Alexis Garcia. And I guess you're right, Chris. I, 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 give I don't really want to say I, it, but uh, the me. will's there, but still far from there. Far, far from there. But but once again, from from the beginning of the telecast, you know, um, I I told you guys what this is. You know, the, these are up and comers. You guys are seeing what 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 an undefeated fighter looks like. You know, at 15 and 0, 20 and 0, when he makes it to to the big stage, ESPN, Showtime. You know, back in the day, that's HBO. It, that's, it, that's it. That's all she wrote. Good, good job of the referee on stopping that fight, Chris. The referee did have mercy there because Garcia wasn't really defending himself too much. He wasn't responding. He just wasn't responding. Wasn't responding. Fernandez banging away to the body. Good job by the referee on stopping that fight. Yeah, definitely give props to the referee, something we rarely do here in Tijuana, but let's give him props. Um, you know... Once again, I give props to Garcia as well. A little bit disappointed right there. You can see it in his face. But the man came out and he fought his heart out, man. Like he he did it. He did, he did the best that he could with what he had. Emmanuel Fernandez did what he was supposed to do. He he took out an opponent that he was that was underqualified to be in the ring with him tonight. And kudos to Fernandez. And once again, we want to thank our sponsor, Slobody Incorporated, as well as our friends from Republic Realty Company. Stellar credit. Game Up, World Quality Cannabis and CBD. Models, sporting goods. Got to go to Moe's. CES, cleaning contractor. Stay Sharp Barbershop, 209's best barbershop. It's Hemp Bro World Quality CBD pre-rolls. Jeez, Bulldog Kennels. Right. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the referee steps, stops in, steps in and stop and calls a halt to this contest official with a time of 1 minute and 23 seconds in the second round. Damas y caballeros, el referee en turno, el profesor Fernando Rentería, detiene las acciones con un tiempo oficial de 1 minuto 23 segundos en el segundo asalto. Declaring your winner by the way of TKO victory. Su vencedor por la vía del knockout técnico. From Modesto, California, USA. Emmanuel Fernandez. So, Chris, we've got to talk about the main event, the main dish for tonight. Giovanni King Gio Gonzalez going at it against Cristian El Pipo Arenas. And we gotta we gotta talk about this. This is not the first time they have met each other in the ring. This is their second fight back at uh, December 7, um, 2019. 2019. Right? 2019. Uh, Giovanni Gonzalez got the win by TKO victory. Uh, if I remember correctly, correctly was in the sixth, sixth round. And Cristian El Pipo Arenas hasn't fought since. So we got to talk about the obvious here. Two, almost a year and a half, 18 months, uh, more or less, for inactivity uh, for Cristian El Pipo Arenas. Uh, your thoughts about that? Well, I mean, coming off a loss, man. And to be honest, uh, if I lost, uh, my next fight would be immediately to the guy that I lost to. And he gets to try to avenge that loss, you know, after starting 6-0 and with three knockouts. Stellar record. Um, fighting uh, a good fighter in Giovanni Gonzalez. Um, you know, he wants to go in there and avenge that loss, man. Um, losing to the same guy twice probably sucks. <laughs> so I'm sure he's going to come in here tonight. You know, we did speak to him. Um, he, he's very dedicated to, to, to this. Despite taking the long layoff, he's ready to go and trying to get that victory and um, revenge fight against Gonzalez. Definitely, and we got to say this, Giovanni Gonzalez is uh, it's highly entertaining watching him fight. He always keeps his cool, the, the Stockton face, uh, not, uh, not particularly... Um, uh, st he's kind of like a slow starter, if, you, if I may. He's a, he's a little bit of a slow s starter, but, but you know what I do like about him, uh, we've seen him a couple times here right. in uh, Best in Boxing. Um, he comes in and he bangs, man. Um, he bangs. You you want you want a, a definition of uh, Mexican style, and I think uh, King Gio puts it on, man. King Gio comes in and he puts on a good show every single time, man. Win or lose, um, the times that I've seen him fight, he leaves it all in the ring, and according to him, he had the best training camp that he's ever had. Um, we're gonna have to take his word for it, and he's gonna put on a good show. Definitely, and uh, Giovanni Gonzalez is always a guy that he's very sure, he's very confident coming over to his next bout. His last fight was over at uh, late 2020, uh, going all eight rounds against uh, Roa, Jose Luis Roa, with all action bout, a lot of back and forth action. He got, uh, he lost via decision. But always entertaining watching him fight. Then yeah, he... one, once again, like I, like I mentioned, you know, um, always entertaining. Um, he is coming off a, a bad, you know, three fights and three fights lost, lost, draw, I believe, or lost, draw, loss um, for for Mr. King Gio Gonzalez, part of the promoter or the promoter here tonight as well, uh, main event and promoter. That's that's a, and a fun fact for you, Chris. Yeah. Tell he me. retired during he, during the uh, post fight interview last time. He actually said that was it. So uh, we talked about okay, that yeah, during yeah. the fight interviews, and he was like, "Oh uh, yeah, you know what? But uh, I still I still want to fight, you know? Yeah, I, man. I, I, I want to do this. I'm I'm not, I'm not ready to 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 to, to just uh, hang off uh, uh, the gloves." And I could tell during the fighter interviews that Giovanni Gonzalez uh, came very prepared. He he seemed confident, yeah. and uh, this is a 12-round fight. Keep that in mind, fight fans. We are going to watch a title fight. 12 rounds of boxing. 
and uh, hardest place is this. That yeah. can't be too good, you know? We got one fan in the corner over We got here. one fan, but, but that's for fan. us. That's yeah, aiming yeah. at us. We got one fan. Um, we won't share with anybody. It's very hot in here, man. Uh, to, to say that you're going to do 12 rounds, ah, man, it's going to be tough, dude. It's going to be very tough uh, for both fighters. You know, who's in better shape? Uh, who came in here very well prepared? Arenas coming off, a long layoff. So that's that's the hard part, you know, coming off a long layoff. And King Gio coming off a bad year in 2020. So this, this right here. I think it makes for an interesting formula, don't you think? It makes it for an interesting fight, man, because it's a, it's a make or break for both of them. And I think you'll be able to see who wants it more. You know what I mean? Who wants it more? To be honest, I think Gonzalez has the better, the better uh, chance here tonight, considering he does have a victory over Arenas already, and also Arenas coming off a very long layoff, coming into a long fight in a 12-round fight. Definitely, that has to be uh, a confident uh, booster right there, like knowing that you've already TKO'd uh, the guy that you're going at it uh, tonight, Chris. Yeah, well, it's a booster for Gonzalez. You know, I did ask him in the fighter meeting, um, like, you know, how, how is he coming into this fight? But he really did say, his words, not mine. I trained my ass off. Okay, great. Let's see what we see here tonight. You know, um, it's it's easier said than done. I say that all the time. Um, you can say whatever you want in the fighter meetings. You can say whatever you want uh, before the fight, to the fighter, whatever, man. The boxing ring will tell you the truth every single time, man. Um, every single time. And once again, we really want to thank our, our sponsors tonight, Lombardi Incorporated, Republic Realty Company, Seller Credit, Game Up Nutrition, World Quality Cannabis and CBD, Models Sporting Goods. Gotta go to, gotta go to Moe's. CES Cleaning Contractors. Stay Sharp Barbershop, 209's best barbershop. It's Hemp Bro, World Quality CBD Pre-Rolls. Jeez, Bulldog Kennels. Campo Tree Service, professional and affordable tree cutting. KR27 Group LLC, looking to save more money on your taxes? Hit up KR27. Chill of Nutrition, Pizza Factory. Scalp Micropigmentation. All of this sponsors from the very own area of Stockton, California. And once again, we really thank you guys for your sponsorship tonight as we thank our fight fans for tuning in on this uh, streaming over at uh, Global Sports Streaming YouTube channel as well as Fight Hub TV. Uh, once again, Chris, and I'm watching a couple of commentates uh, on, on comments on the, on the YouTube stream and people are having fun. People are mocking you. They're most mocking you, mostly mocking you than mocking me, but... Uh, a uh, couple of jabs towards the uh, ring girls over there, mm -hmm. as well as the hairstyles that we've seen tonight. There's absolutely no way anybody's mocking me, Gerardo. Um, <laughs> I don't believe you, bro. That's it. I don't believe you. We'll just have to read it to leave it. Oh, so, Chris, take, uh, talk us through this uh, replay here. So, pretty much an absolute domination by Fernandez here from Modesto, California, man. Culminating in the in the referee having mercy on Mr. Garcia, Mr. Alexis Garcia. Like, from the beginning, man, uh, Emmanuel Fernandez was just too big. Uh, definitely more skilled. Alexis Garcia um, definitely had some guts in there to, to, to follow through with continuing to punch. Typically when you're outmatched, not typically, um, every mo most often than not, you know, you tend to shell up, you know, you, you kind of get a little gun shy. 
and uh, knowing that the other man is a little bit stronger. Um, not Garcia. Garcia chunked him until the very end, until the, the referee had a little bit of mercy on him. Definitely. And uh, if you're in Garcia's corner, if you're his trainer, what do you say to him? Is it time to, you, to hey, guy, uh, you know what? Uh, you don't got it, man, or you should do something else. You should train more. What are as your a, thoughts, Chris? As a being, being a professional fighter, because it, it's easy for me to talk. I've never been in a professional uh, boxing match. So uh, to me, I have to honor and respect all the athletes that have the guts to go at it in a boxing ring. So I'm asking you. And, you and, have the authority. And, and, and same with me. I'm going to respect every single person that, that decides to step into the ring. Um, I respect Alexis Garcia. Um, does he have the skill? No. Does he have the tenacity? Yes. He got in the boxing ring against a much bigger, stronger man, better man. Um, but no, I would never tell somebody not to do what they want to do. You know what I mean? Um, Respect, brother. Respect. Cool, Thank yeah. you. So, so Garcia had the the audacity to to come in, to come out here and try to prove himself and, and put himself out there, man, and put himself out in front of everybody. You know. Uh, in front of the public, in front of his friends, in front of his family out here that that, that followed and, and came because uh, we did hear a little bit, you know, a few people cheering for him. So an hour and a half drive uh, from his hometown in Mexicali from here yeah. to Tijuana. So, so, no, I would never tell him, you know, give it up. Well, you, you may, hear maybe. it from a uh, professional boxer, San Diego kid, the SZ kid, Chris Martin, and I'm really honored, Chris. I, I really like the fact that I can communicate, you know, I can, I can, oh, energy, oh, whatever. I'm like uh, the male version of Sofia Vergara on sports commentating. You were mocking me on that before. But uh, you want me I'm to really, tell him? You want me to tell him? No, no, don't, <laughs> okay, don't, no, no, no. That's all right, man. That's okay. all right, brother. I, I appreciate that, though. <laughs> uh, but I'm really honored. I'm really thankful uh, to be um, uh, calling the fights. Uh, besi uh, besides you uh, being the professional fighter, then you can talk us through, and you can and you can give us, in including that uh, mental preparation, the mental side of boxing. You know. Thank you, man. Um, I, I really do love boxing. Uh, everybody out there, I, I enjoy every single aspect of this game. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and plug my business because I do own a boxing gym in San Diego, California, Bonita, California, Azteca San Diego Boxing Club. Follow us on Instagram. Follow my guy here, right here, El Cabron de las Ventas. Don't know L before it, though. Cabron de las Ventas, very, very popular man here uh, on Instagram. In the sales community, this guy could sell anything. Um, so, I sold my way to com commentate on fights, so yeah. I'm like, I must be kind of good. <laughs> no, you're good at you're good at what you do, my man. You're good at what you do. Um, I'm also honored here to, to be here with you. So thank you for, for throwing it my way. I throw it back. So we're getting ready for the next fight. <laughs> so, guys, fun fact, we have uh, next up Victor Torres from Modesto, California. Going at it, uh, get get this, get this, uh, Chris. He's going at it against a fighter who just got the call an hour before. I just want to say this. Welcome to Tijuana, guys. An hour. He just got the call right now. He's ready to hey, fight. The, the show must go on. You know what's funny, man? Like, we, we recently did, like, we were in Guadalajara together right. uh, two weeks ago. We were, we were there for... Um, calling the Chavez fight. Calling the Chavez fight versus Camacho Jr. in honor of, you know, Hector Camacho Sr., who passed away not too long ago. But, you know, um, life was cut short. Heart goes out to, to the family. Um but one thing I remember is the fact that he said many times, like in the, like I was a little kid, but it's funny that I still remember. You know what I mean? Um, that um, and I always thought Camacho was was Mexican as well. He spoke Spanish. I was born in '86. I think the fight was in '91, '92, and uh, I was like, why is he talking to him like that? But anyway, <laughs> anyways, uh, he says that oh he fought nothing but cab drivers and blah blah blah. 
But this is an example of those cab drivers. Man, this guy took the fight in one hour notice. On our card here, we had Angel Garcia, right? Yeah, Angel Garcia. And we're getting a completely different opponent. Different opponent. A different opponent uh, for this bout. In yeah. an hour notice. In an hour notice. I don't know if I, I love this guy. He's my hero. Or I, I, I want to say to him, hey, dude, you should really go get some help, man. That, that's No, <laughs> well, I give him props. Give him props. I give him props. Give him props. Uh, definitely. Give definitely. Him props first. And then second, um, what is he going to, how is he going to fight? You know what I mean? Will this fight, what's the over-under? I want to see it on the comments right there. What's the over-under for this fight on an opponent that took the fight? On one hour notice, we read we are against uh, Victor Torres. We are reading uh, we're reading a lot of comments here, and uh, <laughs> people saying, "Yo, no, this looks like a movie. This is kind of like a movie." Uh, Jams here says, "Damn, hope he trains all the time. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. badass, though." Yeah, definitely, Jams. What, so. Once again, once again, uh, over under. What's the over under on this fight? Somebody lay, lay that down on the comments. What's the over under for this fight? on a guy that's coming on one hour notice. This, I've been in this game for 20 years. I've been boxing for 20 years. Never have I heard one hour notice. Dude, I heard one day notice. This, never, never I'm, one I'm hour. willing to bet this guy was watching the telenovela over at his place. I don't know, perhaps uh, having some tacos with the wife, you know, and uh, hey, are you ready to fight, bro? Oh, yeah, let, let's do it. Yeah, I'm a Mexican, all right. Let, let, me, puts, get my, let puts, me get my calzones here and... Uh, puts everything down. Let's go. <laughs> puts everything. Where's the fight? Where's the, Where's the fight? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, comments are cracking me up. I don't, I don't, I don't want to read most of them because... You guys, are, you guys can, are can tough. We, right? they, this is the <laughs> internet. We can read whatever we want, right? Oh no! But people are having a, are, are having fun. I, I, minus like a zillion. We had Mad Dog over here saying that the over under is like minus a zillion. I, I, I cannot even read that uh, that many uh, zeros. So yeah, that's. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. I'm gonna go two guys. He makes it past the first round. He makes it past the first round. Oh wow. I, 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 I am so rooting for this guy. I am so rooting for this he, guy. He makes hopefully, it, ho hopefully he'll be selling some merch because I, I just want to buy it. Man. He makes it past. Uh, that's what I'm saying. He makes it past the first round. Follow me on Instagram at SD Kid Chris Martin. My my homie here, Cabron de las Ventas. At Cabron de las Ventas. At can, Cabron de las Ventas. Money talks. <laughs> So we're getting ready for the fight. I guess we can. I guess we can understand how, uh, uh, why this is taking so much. The guy is probably. Uh, he was told an changing. hour. He was told an hour ago. Oh my God! This he was told an hour right. ago. Uh, this is this is surreal. This is surreal. surreal. But but this is Tijuana. This Only is Tijuana, boxing, baby. Man. This Only is Tijuana, boxing. Eh? 664 area code. Get that right, homeboy. <laughs> Y de Tijuana, Baja California, Antonio Torres Nava. And from Modesto, California, USA, Victor Torres.
Ladies and gentlemen, this is the co-main event of the evening. Six rounds of boxing in the super bantamweight division. Damas y caballeros, este es el combate coestelar de esta noche. Programado a seis asaltos en la división de peso Super Gallo. Your three judges scoring this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces, Alberto Martínez, Paul Ríos e Iván Velasco. Referee in charge of the action, su referee para este combate, Profesor Fernando Rentería. Interesting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner. He wears blue trunks with white trim and red. He officially weighs in 122 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul, vistiendo pantaloncillo color azul con blanco y rojo, con un peso de 122 libras. He stands with 12 professional bouts, con 12 combates profesionales de la ciudad de Tijuana, Baja California, Antonio Torres Nava. And his opponent across the ring, standing in the red corner. He wears black trunks with gold trim. He officially weighs in 122 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja, vistiendo pantaloncillo negro con oro, con un peso oficial de 122 libras. He stands with a record of six victories, eight defeats, one draw, and four of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record de seis victorias, ocho derrotas, un empate, y cuatro de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. From Modesto, California, USA, Victor Torres. And now giving out the final instructions con las indicaciones finales, su referee, el profesor Fernando Rentería. Six rounds, seis asaltos. Cuidado con cabezazos, golpes en la nuca, espalda, debajo del cinturón están prohibidos. Choca su guante, suerte. So we're back, folks. We had some uh, audio issues here. And we're getting ready to watch my own personal hero, Chris, Antonio Torres Nava, who took the fight <laughs> an hour before. I didn't know that was even possible, like legally possible, I mean. Yeah, but I, I was unaware of the fact also, but remember what I laid down on the comments? Over under, he makes it past the first round. Does Antonio Torres Nava from Tijuana. Chris, he looks like a guy who could take an hour notice. Oh, no. He just took that left hook there by Torres. Ooh, he looks like a meme body mode shots, mode. too. Yeah. Oh. oh, no. My prediction might be a little bit off, but here he comes. Does Nava, and he fires back, gets Torres off of him. Enough to give me hope he makes it past that first round. Just, just want to acknowledge the fact that both guys' last name are Torres. We got Victor Torres on the black trunks as well as Antonio Torres Nava on the blue trunks. And the Antonio Torres Nava is the, as the people on the comments of this live stream are telling him, they're nicknaming him the one hour man. So the one hour man, Antonio Torres Nava, uh, my own personal hero, it, if, it, if you ask it, me. It doesn't mean what you think it means, ladies. Calm, <laughs> calm down. Oh, that was said by Chris Martin. <laughs> uh, Antonio holding the zone, huh? He should really, he should really circle up, yeah. And, and Torres, in my opinion, should be pushing the pace considering, and I don't know if he knows. Ooh, the nice combination by Antonio Torres Nava. And I don't know if Victor Torres knows if his opponent did come in on a one hour notice. I suppose he does know, but uh, if he does know, he should be pushing the pace right now. Ooh, nice. That hook by Antonio. Shots by Victor Torres. 
and I'm 30 seconds away from my prediction coming true. Makes it past the first round. Does Antonio Torres Nava, the one hour man, as branded by our YouTube, YouTube subscribers on Fight Hub TV. Ooh, good shot there landed by Nava. Made it, made it. Oracle Chris Martin. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. And the fact that uh, Nava is not sitting down. I think the fact that if he sits down, um, yeah, he's not going to sit down as he just told his corner. Oh, I think man. if he sits down, he won't get back up. <laughs> that guy's cold. That guy's cold. He's a mean machine. That's. Oh my God, man! That, that, I'm telling you, that guy's my hero. My hero, damn it! I'm gonna invite him over at Christmas dinner because and this some guy. Tacos. Go get some tacos. Oh man, I don't know about the the tacos get, get some tacos, bro. Yeah, forget about Christmas. You, you get all the tacos you want, bro. There you go. He looks like he's eating all the tacos he wants too, <laughs> right before they called him. Well, that's that's Victor that's Torres. Energy, Victor man. Torres needs to take this into account. The fact that his opponent came in on, on a one hour notice, my man. Put the pressure. Get your opponent out of there. Yes, he does have 12 professional fights. Does Nava. But the notice. I don't know. Mentally, Chris, I have to differ with you because uh, Victor Torres, that, ha that has to mess up with you. I know, I know. Uh, obviously, you, 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 you can, it, it, it doesn't, it's, it's uh, unnecessary to say the facts. Uh, Antonio Torres is not in shape for this fight he obviously did not prepare for this fight he didn't even know he was going to fight today so but uh victor choice that has to messed up with your head psychologically psychologically i mean like uh oh yeah i was uh, uh i did a, a training camp for one guy and yeah all of a sudden I'm, I'm i'm fighting with another guy and guess what he just he just took the fight i don't know man uh, I think that Victor is good, good body shot by Victor Torres, but but you're right. May, maybe it messes with your psyche, but that's it, man. You're you're one round into the fight. Get your get your stuff together to, to be polite and G-rated here. Get your stuff together and, and do what you have to do to, to get this win and to try to get an impressive win. You know, because anything less than a knockout, I think, is a is a disappointment for Victor Torres. You Especially against right. an opponent coming off one yeah. hour notice. Yeah, definitely. And, and Antonio Torres going at it. He's yeah. still training punches. Uh, I, I don't see the energies there. I don't think that the gas, the gas tank has a lot, uh, a lot left. But uh, damn, Chris, he's still, uh, he's still throwing. Yeah, I mean, a professional of 12 bouts, man. Like, I mean, he, he has 12 bouts, you know. Uh, definitely a losing record. Yes, no problem. But he's got 12 bouts. The guy's got experience. Most likely in the gym, you know, um, training often. Maybe not that, maybe doesn't do as many sit ups as we can tell here. Ooh. And Victor Torres noticed that and, and going yeah, to the he, body. He keeps ripping to the body. He needs to keep doing that to Definitely. get that impressive win, like I'm saying, because that's what he's supposed to do. Antonio Torres just spit away his mouth guard, trying to gain a little extra seconds. That's it, that's it. Yeah, periphery waving it off. Not a huge surprise for us fight fans. It is what it is. Props to Antonio Torres on taking this fight on such a short notice. Give this man a Guinness World Record. I don't know <laughs> the what Guinness the- Guinness World Record for short notice fights, man. One hour. He was like over at his house watching the telenovela and, and then all of a sudden, hey, hold my taco. I'm hold gonna go my, fight and then, and then I'll come back, all right? Hold, hold my beer. Hold my beer. Hold my beer. And my taco. I'll be right back. <laughs> you should always have a beer with your taco. Absolutely. Or a taco with your beer. Absolutely, that's what we're gonna do after this, right? Perfect. Definitely. Tijuana tacos are the best. Best in the world. That's actually a, conversa that's actually a conversation we were having earlier. Go to Mexico City nowhere near the, the tacos the taco quality nope. of tijuana the taco Go. meter here in tj it's all the way up yeah 
the t <laughs> the taco meter. I like it. I, I I was prepared for that. I study it. Okay. Designed my see, jokes. It seems, it seems like you. Yeah. It's high quality stuff. <laughs> we got Javis Bickle saying, "Bet he can make 24 tacos in three minutes." <laughs> Nice. Let's watch the replays and take us through the knockout. Ooh, huge uppercut. Uh, huge right uppercut by and Victor and Torres. That's, that's just kind of what sealed the deal, man. Like, you know, the guy immediately threw his mouthpiece on the ground. Oh, wow. And that's all she wrote. Huge uppercut. Right, right hand uppercut by Victor Torres. And that's all she wrote. Ladies and gentlemen, Let's the, make the referee stops Paolo the bout officially Paolo at 2 Paolo. minutes and 30 seconds in the second round. Damas y caballeros, tenemos el tiempo oficial. 2 minutos 30 segundos en el segundo asalto. Declaring your winner by the way of TKO victory. Su vencedor por la vía del knockout técnico. From Modesto, California, USA. Victor Torres. And once again, we're gonna we are going to thanks uh, thank our sponsors, La Body Incorporated, Republic Realty Company, as well as Stellar Credit, Game Up Nutrition, world quality cannabis and CBD at Game Up Nutrition, Models Sporting Goods at Models, CES Cleaning Contractors, as well as. Stay Sharp Barbershop, 209's best barbershop. It's Hemp Bro, world quality CBD pre rolls. Jeez, Bulldog Kennels. As well as a Campo tree service, professional and affordable tree cutting. KR27 Group LLC, looking to save some more money on your taxes? Hit up KR27. T uh, chill Nutrition. Pizza Factory, Scalp Micro Pigmentation, as well as our friends at uh, Hands Off Healing Massage. Once again, thank you all of our sponsors for sponsoring this special night of boxing, Chris. Very special night of boxing. Um, th this has been so far an entertaining bout, bouts, excuse me, um, as uh, Mr. Gerardo here take, takes a quick break. Um, I'll go ahead. I'll go ahead and talk to you guys about what's going on here as far as far as the fights. So far, we had very good fights, uh, entertaining bouts. To me, the funniest thing was the fact that we just got, I think, a record in a one-hour notice, man. So, so props, props to the promoter, props to the commission here. And approving this here in Tijuana, just kind of to get the show going. Um, we're still at limited capacities here at this uh, at this event, but um, you have some people here, so you don't, you don't want to disappoint the people. Um, everybody at home, also, you don't want to be disappointed, right? You guys are watching here on Fight Hub TV, global sports streaming. You don't want to be disappointed either, right? So, so um, the promoter and King Geo Promotions. Uh, global sports streaming here uh, went ahead and, and did the impossible with an opponent on one hour notice everybody one hour notice and I'd like to say I predicted made it past the first round you did he made it past the first round you did People on the YouTube live stream giving us a hard time, Chris, saying that we should have taken the fight. But who would be doing the commentating if we were fighting? Yeah, exactly, that's, that guys. doesn't make any sense, guys. Exactly, guys. That doesn't Come make on. any sense. Come, Come on. on, man. I could have gone up there, whoop his ass real quick, come back down here, but but that's too much. That's too much. Yeah, that's too, too much. much. You know, 
Well, like keeping your headset on and, and commentating on your own fight. Yeah, I'm kicking this guy's ass. Yeah, yeah throwing the jab. Yeah. yeah. It's a little bit braggadocious for me, bro. Not my style. <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you guys. Wouldn't put you guys in that predicament. But uh, I'm just kidding, man. I, I don't know. You I know what? That. I say a lot of stupid stuff. <laughs> but uh, an event like that wouldn't be as bizarre as a, as a night as we've seen thus far, uh, Chris. We've seen some... We see some crazy stuff, man. Crazy, um, crazy. You know, uh, Tijuana. You know, we always start late, just so you know, in case you guys didn't catch us from the beginning. Um, we're on the Mexican hour here. What was it? An hour twenty? Like we're like ninety minutes. Yeah, but past close the time. To, yeah, close to ninety minutes. But uh, here we come with our main event coming soon. Uh, getting ready to to, to start up. Uh, walk entrance is coming soon. We're hearing that from the truck. Um, but yeah, you know, the show must go on. This this gentleman took the fight on one hour notice and, and props to him. Christian El Pipo Arenas. And from Stockton, California, USA, Giovanni King Gio Gonzalez. It's time for boxing, and it's time to rock and roll. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to your main event of the evening. 12 rounds of boxing for the vacant UBO Super Featherweight Championship of the World. Damas y caballeros, este es el combate estelar de esta noche. Pactado a 12 asaltos por el campeonato mundial Peso Super Pluma de la UBO. Your three judges scoring this bout in ringside. Sus tres jueces. Alberto Martinez, Paul Rios e Iván Velasco. Your referee in charge of the action. Su referee para este combate, el profesor Fernando Rentería. Ahora bien, amigos que nos siguen a través de GSS, Global Sports Streaming, estamos en vivo desde la tradición boxística, la Big Punch Arena, desde la frontera más visitada del mundo, Tijuana, Baja California, México. ¡Ajusten sus cinturones! Interesting first, the fighter standing in the blue corner, he wears black and silver. He officially weighs in 130 pounds. Presentando ustedes en la esquina azul, vistiendo pantaloncillo negro con plata, con un peso de 122, 130 libras. He stands with a professional record, a near perfect one. Six victories, one lone defeat, and three of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un record casi perfecto. Seis victorias, una derrota, y tres de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Representando a su natal, Tijuana, Baja California, México. Aquí está Cristian El Pipo Arenas. And his opponent across the ring, standing in the red corner. He wears red trunks with white trim. He officially weighs in the same 130 pounds. Y su rival en la esquina roja, vistiendo pantaloncillo rojo con blanco, con un peso idéntico de 130 libras. In 17 professional bouts, 10 victories, 6 defeats, 1 draw, 
en eight of those victories coming by the fast way of knockout. Presenta un récord de 10 victorias, 6 derrotas, y un empate y 8 de esas victorias por la vía del knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing from Stockton, California, USA, the knockout artist, the proud King Gio is in the house. Giovanni Gonzalez. And now giving out the final instructions con las indicaciones finales, su referee a cargo, el profesor Fernando Rentería. 12 rounds, 12 asaltos. Mucho cuidado con los cabezazos, golpes en la nuca, espalda, debajo del cinturón, están prohibidos. Choque sus guantes y suerte. Gana el mejor. So here's the quickest tail of the tape that you've ever seen before. 30 25 for Christian El Pipo Arenas. Uh, they both are virtually Everything identical. identical. Everything is the, the same. Even the haircut, it's <laughs> very similar. Well said, Gerardo, well said. That, that, that saved some time. Absolutely. <laughs> That made my job easier. Here we go, guys. Main event of the evening. evening. Round number one. Immediately, what are you looking out for, uh, Chris? Well, the fact that uh, Cristian Arenas was off a year and a half since his long loss to Gonzalez. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, that's a soft body, man. That's a 2020 body, if you ask me, man. That's a, that's a quarantine body right there. Maybe, maybe not, not in the best of shape. And we'll see if uh, Mr. Giovanni Gonzalez will be able to capitalize, telling us that he's in the he had the best training camp of his life. But we will see. That makes completely sense, cons considering that uh, this is a 12-round fight. You should really be putting on some trainer training. So Cristian Picuarenas, right away we see that he's not in the best shape of his career. And I wonder if, if it's going to take his toll on a hot night as this against a uh, fast, uh, confident King Gio, Giovanni Gonzalez. And he pressures. I, I, would, I would say a typical pressure fighter, Mr. Giovanni Gonzalez. Just pressure, pressure, pressure. Um, head movement typically like he's showing us there and effective pressure is, is where, where, where it comes to play you know um, coming off a lost lost draw for for Gonzalez you know looking to prove that he still got it against Arena Arena still trying to trying to prove it to himself as well after starting six six and no with three knockouts and losing his last bout and hasn't fought in almost two years yeah, keep in mind, fight fans, that uh, that's exactly right, Chris. Uh, Christian's only loss was against uh, his man right here, uh, Giovanni Gonzalez, back at 2019. 2019. And, and right off the bat, man, I, I, I can't can't lie to you guys, man. Arena seems to be very slow. Uh, maybe he's still warming up. Yeah, we'll perhaps he's like, uh, ooh, nice right hand to the body for Giovanni Gonzalez. Perhaps he's like uh, saving the gas tank for the later rounds, Chris. Does that make any sense? It makes sense, but you, you got to kind of open up, man. You got you to gotta earn your respect at the beginning, and it, it's not something that uh, that uh, Arenas is doing right now. Ooh, maybe, maybe there with that one, that quick slip, quick slip right hand. Right hand, yeah, partially blocked ooh. by Giovanni uh, Gonzalez. Gonzalez working the body, he's seen uh, an opportunity here. Again, to the body, changing levels. Giovanni, to the body, then goes back to the head. Faint, good left hook to the body by Giovanni Gonzalez. A little gift from Giovanni to Chico Arenas to end the race return. And, and like I mentioned, man, uh, Arenas sporting his quarantine body, and that's something that uh, Gonzalez needs to expose right away as we see the focus that we see that you see in his eyes there um, Expose that and, and keep digging to the body keep throwing those left hooks man uh, And test the conditioning of Christian Pipo Arenas test that conditioning uh, 
as we see some blood uh, coming over from uh, Arena's mouth. A little bit, not too much. Cool, confident uh, Giovanni Gonzalez. And Chris, take us through through the replay. So, so not too much going on, but just kind of a little peppering and a little body shots thrown by Gonzalez. Nothing, nothing crazy landed there, but uh, something I touched on at the end of the round is the fact that he does. He needs to keep going to the body, does Gonzalez. It, it'll... It'll definitely pay off, you know, considering the fact that Arena doesn't seem to look like he's in the best of shape. I think it's safe to say that Giovanni Gonzalez got the better of uh, Arenas on the first round, so... 100%. Yeah. Not a typical, Chris, I might say, not a typical start from Giovanni Gonzalez, as he uh, kind of... He, well, we were talking about this earlier. He's a slow starter. He always starts in the fourth, maybe fifth round. So props to Giovanni Gonzalez for, for starting starting smart, starting energetic, throwing punches, Chris. S slightly energetic. I think that this, the first round, excuse me, was um, typical. Maybe, maybe to you, uh, maybe because Arenas didn't do much, but I think typical for, for Gonzalez, the fact that he, he's kind of heating up that motor. Um, and like you mentioned, we we'll start seeing it in round three, round four. That's that's Ooh. why we got a pro here with uh, Chris Martin. He has the talent. I have the looks. So we complement each other, Chris. Absolutely, man. <laughs> you can have that title. You right? complete me. You can have that title. One of the better looking in, men. In the I've words seen. of Jerry Maguire. Ooh, nice double up hook. Ooh, Arenas felt that. You can Jerry see it Maguire on, never yeah. said that, Gerardo. You, 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 you're losing me here. You, 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 can, you can see it on his face. Arenas, Arenas is on red alert right now. Giovanni watching, stalking his prey. Again, to the yeah. body, to the head. Arenas looking hurt. Arenas looking hurt. Took a knee. Oh, those punches hurt, Chris. I mean, that was a solid left hook to the, I think to that's the it. liver. And yeah, he's, he's not, not coming he's back not getting up. He's not getting he's up. Not getting that's up. it. That's all she wrote. Body work from Kinkyo Giovanni Gonzalez. Knockout W in the very second round of the fight. Chris? King Gio did, did exactly what, what uh, he said he was going to do. Uh, we didn't get much from Cristian Arenas pre fight, uh, but we see why. Maybe he wasn't in the best of shape. Um, to me, coming off a loss to the same guy and fighting the same guy in a rematch that I think would have kind of put more emphasis in my training. You would be able to see it in my body. Uh, you couldn't see it much on Arenas' body. Uh, once again, sporting his uh, quarantine body and, and not looking very stellar and, and in shape. But nonetheless, knockout victory for Giovanni Gonzalez. As we wait for the truck to give us the replay of the action, the knockout W for Giovanni Gonzalez. It's just a matter of seconds now. And if you guys are seeing the same screen that we're seeing, Arenas just got up right now. On, in real time, just got up right now. So that must have been a pretty wicked left hook to the body. And I, I really do want to see the replay as soon as we can get it. And it was volume. It was volume, Chris, because it wasn't just one left hook. He kept repeating it. Uh, King Gio saw an opening. opening. He saw he, uh, his man hurt, and uh, he capitalized on that. Let's make it official with Pablo Flores. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout comes to an end officially with a time of 2 minutes and 15 seconds in the second round. Tenemos el tiempo oficial. Dos minutos 15 segundos en el segundo asalto. El referee Fernando Rentería da el conteo de 10. Por lo tanto, su vencedor por la vía del knockout. Your winner, by the way, of KO Victory. He is the new UBO Super Featherweight Champion. El nuevo campeón mundial peso superpluma de la UBO.
Stockton's own, King Gio in the house, Giovanni Gonzalez! So Giovanni King Gio Gonzalez, a better man tonight as he got the KO victory. Body punches. Truly Mexican style, like the Chavez uh, signature, Chris? Would yeah, you say that? coming forward, coming forward on him all night, all night, two rounds. But, you know, must have felt a lot longer for for people. But, hey, man, he got him out of there. As, as we get the replay from the truck so he had already landed a hook to the body kind of softened up arenas there and and still softening him up softening him up right before he culminates to the the, the hardest shot that left hook to the body and it's coming up here in a few seconds he was already he was already landing and landing was king geo and there you go. And it was just kind of an accumulation. So I thought it was just, at the beginning of watching this, I thought it was just one. But no, it was an accumulation of shots landed by King Gio Gonzalez over and over. All right, I'm here with the winner, tonight's champion, the ganador, King Gio Giovanni Gonzalez. First of all, how do you feel right now, champ? ¿Cómo te sientes ahorita, campeón? Uh, first and foremost, did you guys really think I was done after that last fight? I'm back. I had to take some time off, let my body recover. I've been fighting nonstop four years, every three months. I had to take about six months off, and I feel really good. Bueno, si creían que me había ido, que creen, aquí estoy, cuatro años peleando sin parar, y bueno, tenía que tomarme un poquito de tiempo, respirar un poquitín, y regresar con todo. Take us through your strategy. Well, obviously, we only got two rounds of auction, but you seem really determined in. Uh, punishing Arenas uh, to the body. Is, was that your strategy all night long? Did you thought about that before the fight or you kind of like thought so on uh, on this night right now as it's, as, as the fight started? ¿Fue tu estrategia desde el principio tirarle golpes al cuerpo o fue algo que fuiste viendo, viste la oportunidad y capitalizaste? Uh, el nuevo estrategia era para ir al cuerpo. Uh, en este uh, camp, camp uh, fuimos, uh, trabajamos mucho en eso. Eh, Christian Arenas es un peleador muy duro porque le estaba pegando con los jabs y con las derechas y, y si sabía si yo iba derecho con eso, pues que voy a ser una noche larga, so cambiamos al cuerpo, pero eso es algo que hacemos uh, mucho en el campo para esta, para esta pelea y las demás adelante. We had a long training camp, a good training camp as well, and that was our strategy. We designed that strategy, punish him to the body, and we got the W. Tengo que preguntarte esto. I gotta ask you this. What's next for you? You seem very good tonight. You seem very confident tonight. What's next for you? What do you want next? ¿Qué es lo que quieres? Te viste muy bien ahora. Eh, te ves muy seguro. ¿Qué es lo que quisieras de ahora en adelante? Like I said, I had to take time off, let my body recover, let everything recover. I'm back. We're looking to throw a show back here in Tijuana, the end of September, and I'd like to get a rematch with Brandon Cortez. Bueno, pues ahí lo tienen. Quiere una revancha contra Brandon Cortés. Esperemosla muy pronto. Siempre, always a pleasure seeing your fight. Thank you so much. El campeón con ustedes, King Gio, Giovanni Gonzalez. Uh, thank you. First, first and foremost, thank you to GSS, Best in Boxing, uh, Fight Hub TV. Thank you to uh, the announcer. Thank you to uh, one of the best uh, matchmakers in the world, Manny Diaz. Best uh, uh, training gym in the world. ESBC Boxing, Stockton, shout out to the, all my homies from Lodi behind me that came through all the way to Tijuana. And shout out to all Tijuana right here. Un aplauso para el campeón, Giovanni Gonzalez.
All right, everybody, I want to thank you guys for, for watching the, the best in boxing, uh, Fight Hub TV, Global Sports Streaming, coming to you live from Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico at the Big Punch Arena, uh, King Geo Promotions. Guys, this was a, a very good night of boxing. Uh, from, from beginning to end, we had good fights coming forward, Mexican, Mexican style, all fights, all five fights. Um, and remember, the, the one world record, man, one hour notice, uh, one hour notice for, 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 a, for a professional boxing bout. The man made it past the first round into the second. Um, my prediction, guys, thank you guys for watching. It was a beautiful night of boxing. Thank you. Best in boxing, Fight Hub TV. Thank you and have a good night. Thank you for joining us here tonight.